And we welcome you to Stanford Stadium on the campus of Stanford University. What we're threatening skies have already opened in a rainy afternoon so far in Palo Alto as the Huskies and the Cardinal get set, 61 degrees. 100% humidity, the wind has been <laughs> gusting a little bit more even, and the forecast, they were hoping that the rain would hold off till the end of the game, but it has already started and it looks as though it will be a rainy afternoon here between the Cardinal and the Huskies. Washington coming in three and one in Pac-10 play, Stanford breaking a losing streak with a win over SC last week. They are two and two in conference play. Rick Neuheisel bundled up in his second year as the Washington head coach, 13 and six. And Tyrone Willingham in his sixth year as the head coach at Stanford, the longest tenure of anyone on the farm since John Ralston. Of course, one of those 31 losses a year ago in Seattle and after the performance that Marcus Tuiasa Sopo had, you know that he wants to try to shut the Husky quarterback down as soon as possible. Stanford won the toss and he elected to defer to the second half. So the Huskies will get the football to get things underway. Mike Vaselli set to kick off for Stanford. And for the Huskies, it's going to be Derek Johnson and Sean Sweat back at a kick return position. That's right, Todd. Two true freshmen back there returning a big kick on the road. And uh, Coach Newhouse has a lot of confidence in these two young men. Sweat on the left, Johnson on the right. Johnson with a pretty fair average, 25 yards a return so far this season for the Huskies. And after the ball off the tee once in the breeze, we're finally underway. Bazzelli driving that one deep, and it'll go all the way through the end zone. So Marcus Tuiasasopo, so much this week, talked about his phenomenal performance against Stanford a year ago. He will lead this Husky offense out onto the field. And some of his numbers, a little better than 51% completion rate. And the touchdown to interception rate, 50-50 there. Silvers, Fraze, Ben, Ward, and Call across the front. Biggest news, Pat Conniff starting in the backfield now. He will start at the fullback position. Elstrom and Stevens there as well. That's, that's not sunny, folks, honest. <laughs> the world's loudest PA system here, I think. Dry ball being brought in as well. Sonny, we mentioned Pat Conniff in. What kind of a difference does that make for the Huskies right off the get-go? Well, experience, number one. He's a senior fullback. He's been missing the last couple weeks, and I think he's the key to making that option work for Tuyasa Soko. Cardinals scrambling around on defense here on first down. Alexis getting the call. Gets just beyond the yard of uh, scrimmage before he gets collared in a hurry by Matt Leonard. Stanford defensive unit, the Trench Dogs. Benner, Howard, an experienced man in the middle, Pfeiffer and Hoover. Real Johnson, the Pac-10 sack leader, Gabriel Wire that he converted running back. And across the secondary, Carter, Fought, Williams, and Fernandez. Give Alexis a yard on that first carry. He's the single back now as the Huskies spread it out a bit. Option for the first time, and it goes to Alexis again. Over the 25 before he spilled out of bounds. Wire, Fott, and Johnson all there for the Cardinal. And you look statistically at this Stanford defense, Sonny, and one of the things that would scare you a little bit if you're a Stanford defensive coach, four of their five leading tacklers are the four starters in the secondary. That means your backers and line aren't doing a whole lot. Well, somebody must be occupying them, but uh, the safeties you would expect to come up and make some key plays. A lot of times the defenses are funneled towards the backers and the safeties. But uh, they've also got a big guy on the line in Willie Howard, so we'll have to watch his play this afternoon. They open it up completely. Stevens is the slot man to the right on this third down. Flag thrown to the outside, and another flag thrown there as well. It intended that time for one to meet Davis. It was defended by Brian Taylor. And Gordon Reese will tell us about our first infraction of the game. Against the Cardinal, it'll be enough for the Huskies to pick up a first down. Well, the Offside, defense, five yards previous spot, first down Washington. Well, on those kind of plays, you've got a free play. You see Tyrone Willingham not happy with the penalty, but you look at that gra graphic right there, Todd, and it uh, 
they don't get penalized very often. Yeah, they lead the conference with the fewest penalties, but you see they've near, nearly doubled their penalty yardage in their last two games over their per game average. First down for the Huskies, Alexis behind Conniff. And again, we'll only get about a yard sliding down the line that time. Matt Friedrichs along with Willie Howard to make the stop. Rich Alexis, another true freshman. And uh, boy, Rick Neuheisel not afraid to put these true freshmen into action in a hurry. Well, one thing I liked about Rich Alexis on the second down before Willie Howard jumped off sides, he lowered his shoulder and picked up five yards that he shouldn't have picked up. And that, you like to see that in a young running back. Here's a little different look. Conniff the single back this time, providing max protection. Marcus on the roll, and a great snag. Unfortunately, it's by the sideline crew rather than a Husky player. Well, you had Coy Wire for Stanford in on a little pressure, and that's the reason he's on that defensive side to do things like that, and he's, he's athletic. He was a former running back putting pressure on Tui Asasopo. And it's nice that Tui remembered the rule that he could throw the ball away anywhere he wanted to once he's outside that five-yard line. Yeah, you mentioned Coy Wire. What a great story because he was no slouch as a running back at no. all. <laughs> and he's moved over now in that starting backer position for the Cardinal. Well, another, uh, another third and long here for Washington. Under pressure, Johnson is there again. He now has more than half of the team's sack totals. And Real Johnson blows in for his first of the game. Well, that's where their pressure is going to come from. Real Johnson going against Elliott Silvers right there, just getting to the quarterback. But two things happen speed on the outside, and uh, no one open downfield. Quick punt, and that one appeared to go off the side of the foot a little bit that time. It'll get a decent roll, but Fleming's kick will go out of bounds at about the Stanford 43 yard line. Huskies kind of rushed that one right onto the field that time and got rid of it. Well, the Huskies don't want to consistently be in third and long. So far in this first series, they've been there twice, and uh, Stanford gets good field position. Randy Pisani, who has been injured for about half of this season, will get the start for the Cardinal today. He was shaken up late against USC. 51% completion ratio. Chambers, why not Coleman, Heitman, and Schindler across the front. Allen, Moore, Pitts, Best in the conference, McCullum and Stewart are the backs and receivers. Good field position for Stanford's opening possession. And they'll go to work right off the bat. Fasani looking deep middle. McCullum, the hero a week ago, and it's broken up. And Chris Massey was the defender on that one. Massey getting a start in the secondary for Washington today. We take a look at the rest of the lineup for the Husky defensive unit. Across the front, Roberson, Triplett, and Julian. Farms and Kelly, the outside backers, Madavi and Daniels on the inside. Lowe, Williams, Akbar, and Johnson, and Chris Massey also moving up to a cornerback position. Johnson going to see a little less time in that secondary today, although he's there to return kicks as well. Quick pitch this time for Allen, keeping his balance, gets into Husky territory, and finally knocked down by Williams. Stanford was looking at Jafar Williams on the strong side of the field to the right of the pitch man here and a Stanford elects to go to the weak side. Less people on the defensive side for the Husky. You see Williams coming up late, but they saw the strength of the Husky defense on the strong side. They elected to go weak. Nice job by Allen to keep his footing. And he picks up the first down for the Cardinal. At the Washington 46. Williams creeping in a little bit. It's Allen left side again, breaks another tackle and heads into the clear. Akbar forcing him out of bounds at the 24. <laughs> 22 yard gain for a team that's not had a particularly strong rushing attack this year. Well, you see right there, Daryl Daniels trying to avoid the blocker, doesn't get his feet corrected and Gives Will Allen enough time to get to the outside. And here's a young man that hasn't scored a lot of touchdowns this year. But uh, Kerry Carter coming in to score all of those last week. But Brian Allen's a very durable running back. Yeah, Carter got four a week ago, and Allen hasn't tallied one all season. Masani rolling again. Tries to turn the corner, tucks it upfield. That looked to be more coverage than anything else. But he will turn it into plus yardage before he's wrapped up. Triplett and Farms there along with Daniels. 
Well, the Huskies wanted to come into this ball game and put some helmets on Randy Pisani. You know, he's been banged up a couple times this year. And of course, last week he went down late, but uh, Bill Dietrich for Washington, you see Rick Neuheisel, but the uh, offensive coordinator for Stanford thinks last week he just got tired. He was in for 95 plays. Flip-flop now as Wells splits out to the right side. Looking short drop and now having to scramble for trouble, out of trouble. He'll pick up the first down and make it a first and goal situation. So a couple of heady plays in a row, Sonny, by Pisani. Yes, they're not getting enough pressure upfield from the defensive front, not enough push to Pisani. And, you know, this young man has run for positive yardage. Does you see the work there on Larry Triplett on the left side? A lot of people know where he is, two people on him at all times, and looking for trouble right there, but he picks up the first down. Cardinal on its first possession. Fasani has played in four of the seven games so far this season. Allen inside the five and running powerfully on the left side of that line. Akbar combining with Triplett to and Daniels to make that stop. But there have been a bunch of holes on that left side so Well, far. they have. They're running to the freshman side with Kirk Chambers, 67, their big tackle. And you see the rushing yards right there for Stanford, and Fasani's had a, his share of those yards. Yeah, Fasani, we talked about wire moving around. Fasani's been at several different positions in his Stanford career, but he's guiding the Cardinal right now on this first possession. Falling down, he still manages to get it to Carter, but he's stacked up for little gain. Daniels, Williams, and Lowe all there. Yeah, but also Marcus Roberson diving through there, messing it up, but then not a clean handoff to the quarterback. And coaches don't like to see that near the goal line, Todd. There's a good look at Marcus Roberson, 98. Jeremiah Farms also. Red zone defense. 75% opponent scoring rate against the Huskies. And a third down play here for the Cardinal. Carter stutter stepping through, nearly got to the goal line, but Daniels was there to wrap him up. Yeah, you see Stanford bringing in Kerry Carter, who has scored the big four touchdowns last week, but also he's 235 pounds, and he's a big back, obviously, and nice push right there upfield. Larry Triplett and uh, the rest of the defense coming in to stop Carter. Omari Lowe of Madabi had them all there. And the Cardinal electing to bring on the field goal kicker, Mike Pizzelli, who's four of seven in field goals this year. Fasani, the quarterback, is the holder. This would be a 19-yarder just inside the left hash. And the Cardinal get on the scoreboard first to the Husky defense able to keep them out of the end zone, but Stanford goes short field and gets the field goal from Pacelli to take the lead. So the Cardinal on the board first off the 19-yard field goal by Pizzelli. And he'll get set to kick off. Again, Johnson and Sweat back for the Huskies. Pizzelli has not had the most accurate of seasons, and he's not uh, had to kick a long field goal at all yet for the Cardinal this year, so we'll see if that should arise later on. But he's certainly got the leg for it, at least he's shown in his kickoff so far. He drives another one deep here. Johnson will take this one at the one and bring it back. Some room to the outside, and again, out over the 25-yard line, so very close to his average, and he gives the Huskies pretty good field position. 
Well, we mentioned Stanford head coach Tyrone Willingham a little bit concerned about one guy in particular when you discuss the Washington offensive attack. Number one, we can do a better job of controlling the football and scoring on offense to keep it out of his hands. And then number two on defense, see if we can minimize uh, the damage that he does to us rushing the football. Because I think the first we can start with taking away the rush from him and from their two excellent halfbacks, then we put ourselves in position to win. Because I don't know uh, how strong they are in terms of throwing the football. Well, they were strong enough on that one, albeit a little dump pass, but it's a good enough to pat Connor for the first down. Well, that's what you like to see. You want to see your backs catching the football out of the backfield. I know that uh, Pat Conniff has really been missed since his injury and uh, early against Oregon State. So having another guy that can catch the football takes some of the pressure off your outside guys and makes those linebackers respect the guy coming out. Conniff's fourth reception of the season. It's also his longest of the year and gives the Huskies the first down. Five receivers on this set, Todd. You got Jeremy Stevens split out wide with a trip set left. Waited a long time, and then stepping back to get a hand on it that time was Reuben Carter at the cornerback position, and now a flag thrown late. Offensive interference against the Huskies. Well, Willie Hurst was the man I think the officials were looking at coming out downfield. Sonny, that pass appeared to be open for a minute, but then when Marcus held a little extra beat, uh, it was a good athletic play as well by Carter to get up and get the hand on it. Here's the pass call. Pass interference, offense 15 yards to previous spot, still first down. Well, Hurst almost blocking Carter into the... Well, you know, time. he could have avoided the penalty and uh, that pass could have been completed. <laughs> yeah, kind of bumped him right into it. Carter jammed halfway in between. And Boy, next to uh, the flagrant personal foul, this offensive pass interference is a major one. Marcus scrambling out of pressure. Davis the catch out over the 30-yard line before he's chased out of bounds there. Brian Taylor back up cornerback on the stop. Well, the Huskies did show that multiple receiver look to try and get those safeties and linebackers spread out all over the field, Todd, so there's not so much pressure inside tight. Uh, unfortunately, Marcus wasn't able to complete it, and uh, second and really long again. Terry Tharp's in at one of the wide receiver spots now as, again, the Huskies continue to shuttle players in and out. Stevens lining in tight this time. Again to the air. Looking for Tharp, he's open. Couldn't find the ball and it was slightly overthrown as well. You see Marcus under some pressure from Howard. I really thought he had a pretty good look at the swing route to Alexis as well. Well, I thought he was going to throw it to the flat to Alexis right there, 24. But he elects to throw it deep and you can tell that he's no way that he could follow through to let that ball come through. Willie Howard with the pressure, but you've got to be able to step into the ball and follow through to order that nip of the ball that the end to come down. Another third and long situation that just allows the Stanford defense to tee off even more. They're looping on him again, and you see that Howard went down. Marcus is not going to pick up the first down, but he will slide, and then a late flag. That could be enough to get a first down for the Huskies. We can tell how slick that field is. Howard lost his footing completely on the rush, and it's a personal foul against Washington. So never mind the first down, yeah. Well, I'm sure Stanford will decline and force the Huskies to punt. Well, if it's a block from behind. Illegal block in the back, offense, that penalty is declined, fourth down. But it's so tough when your quarterback scrambles out and changes direction, and all of a sudden the guy's back is at you, and you're, you've already committed to the push, and. Unfortunately, you get caught occasionally. Marcus talking things over with Steve Axman. Ryan Fleming back to punt for the second time. Luke Powell is the punt returner for the Cardinal. Back in single setback. Well, they had great pressure on the last punt, Todd, and became very close to blocking. 
Up the middle, and they nearly got it again. Fleming hit, the flag is thrown. This is gonna come back no matter what Powell does, and then he gets hit late as well, but Fleming got hit. Was, the man was not blocked into him, and we'll see what they rule it. Big or little? Probably a little one, though. I don't know, you never know. He went down pretty hard, and... Boy, he's lucky he didn't hurt his knee on yeah, that ball Yeah, he didn't get a through. chance to come down at all. Brian Allen coming through on him. How many times do you see your starting running back nearly blocking the punt? Well, they got Brian Allen doing a lot of things. He's down on kickoff coverage, in on the rush on the punt attempt, and doing a little bit of tailback running as well. Gordon Reese explaining everything to Ben Madabi, and apparently they are going to rule it. Well, let's see the offensive units coming back out on the field. No, it's the punt team. Oh, you're right. Okay, there are enough guys on it, though. So it's the little kick, and they'll, the little uh, roughing the punter infraction, and they'll boot it again. Running into the kicker on a defense, five yards from the previous spot, still fourth down. And here's an interesting one. For this punt, Stanford changes and brings Durrani Pitts out as the return man this time. And you see Allen safely on the sideline this time behind Tyrone Willingham. <laughs> You see the Huskies about 90 yards a game in penalties in the last two, and as we mentioned earlier, Stanford up significantly from its per game average during the season. You see about a yard and a half, but don't expect anything fancy at this point. Try to run a little more protection up the middle, Fleming getting this one away. And Pitts will take the fair catch at the 16. The Cardinal leading it midway through the first quarter. They'll have their second possession when we return. Little bit of the rain here at Stanford Stadium. As the Cardinal come back out. Carter breaking the backfield. They'll give this time to the fullback, a new guy, uh, Brian Glaspie, the ball carrier. Not listed in the two deeps, but one of several ball carriers the Cardinal have had this year as well. Ben Madavi making the tackle after a five yard gain for Glaspie. Well, you can see why uh, Willingham has him in the ball game with the wet conditions being nearly 250 pound fullback. You saw Chris Massey trying to tackle him and it wasn't an easy job. In fact, he didn't do the job. Yeah, it's just his third carry of this season, so. Fasani looking to throw again. He will run and he's wrapped up from behind this time. So a little bit better read by the Husky defensive line and Roberson was able to chase him down. Right there, Marcus Roberson, pretty good pocket. Looked like Fasani wanted to go out to the flat. It was well covered by the dogs. And one thing about Marcus, he's being relentless, going down the line and forcing for the Huskies. He tackled from behind. See the Huskies up close to doubling last season's sack total. And third and long, and Lewis is in at the quarterback position on this one. And on the option attempt, Anthony Kelly smothers it completely. Wasn't Lucas, it was Luke Powell. Excuse me, Luke Powell in at the quarterback position. Well, you know what? Anthony Kelly sees this a few times in practice, so he plays this extremely well. Not blocked, just comes in and gets Powell no, for a big loss. And uh, I'd have to think, Stanford coaches, why would you do that when you have a defense that sees this in practice just about every day? I don't know. Powell, maybe it was going to give them answers on how to defense Marcus the other way. <laughs> Powell's a reserve wide receiver, and now Pizzelli is on to punt once again. I should say for the first time, he's back out on the field uh, as a punter. He doubles as both punter and kicker. 
to Ray Butler back in punt return formation for Washington. Has a bit of a wall set up. Brennan will take it close to midfield, and now it's Washington's turn to start with excellent field position. Same way Stanford was able to go short field for its score. The Huskies starting out at midfield, and uh, that allows you to be a little bit more daring in the playbook. Yeah, it certainly does. You get to go to, the, you know, chapter uh, four <laughs> when you're up near field, midfield. But the Huskies need some good field position. They need to get some plays untracked here, and uh, gaining some field position with that big loss on third down really helps the offense. Robbins to the left, Elstrom to the right. Draw for Alexis. Had a daylight for a moment and then turns it just barely into Stanford territory. Tank Williams leading the tacklers that time for the Cardinal along with Sam Benner. Yeah, Tank Williams came up in a hurry Knocks into Alexis, but Alexis still gains some positive yardage, and you look at the total yards, Todd. And the most interesting thing about that Stanford total, it's all on the ground. They haven't thrown a completion yet, more than 10 minutes. A little mix up here, yeah. It's the deep option run, and uh, Alexis will get back to the line of scrimmage. Rich kind of took a different route on that one a little bit. <laughs> Well, it's a uh, strange looking play here and you see Tui Asasopo going, whoa, you're way out there and Rich Alexis does pick up a little bit of yardage, but uh, he's a freshman, you know, he'll, he'll get all that down here shortly. Yeah, he's, he's run the ball a few times well on that play. Real Johnson shoving him out of bounds, but again, a third and long for the Huskies. Shotgun formation. And they go the five wides again, including Conniff all the way at the bottom of your screen. Slant. Off, intercepted, deflection and picked off. Matt Friedrichs on the interception, and he will take it inside the Husky 35, his second interception of the year, as it went off the hands of Justin Robbins, and Stanford profits from the turnover. Well, you know, Todd, I, uh, you know, you hear this all the time. It's a, it's a great formation. It spreads everybody out. It gives the quarterback a few more options, and right there, what happens, the young receiver, again, not catching the ball in his hands, letting it get to his body, and with contact in the Pac-10 or any college game, you're gonna get hit hard, and it's gonna force that ball out, and that time, unfortunately, for the Huskies, the Stanford comes up with it. Reuben Carter with the defensive pressure from the secondary. You can see one of the keys to Stanford not having a successful season this year, the big change in turnover margin. They hike it up a little bit with that play. Well, you've got to make the plays. You've got to make the grabs. The quarterback gets you the ball, and you work hard in this new formation all week in practice, and uh, you can't allow yourself those little middle mistakes. Allen, again to the left side, and the Huskies stack that one up for about three or four. Triplet leading the tacklers. Low also there. I don't think I've witnessed the Stanford game this far into the first quarter, Todd, without a pass completion from that Stanford offense. I'm trying to think, I don't think he's even made an attempt. He's gone back a couple times and run out of the pocket each time. Has tried one pass. He right. tried the one long one down the middle. That's early. right, early, you're right. Went for broke on the first play. Allen again, vaulting over a couple of tacklers. Ball's loose, but a Stanford lineman falls on top of it. Appears to be Mike Holman, the center, recovering for the Cardinal. Allen's fifth carry already for 46 yards. Carter has been their leading running back this year statistically. He's at the tailback position this time on third down. Protects the ball well, and Williams spills him. It'll be very close to the first down. Appears to be just a little bit short, depending on the initial mark, but. That was a great tackle by Curtis Williams, man on man with a big running back, and put him down pretty good. Unfortunately, Kerry Carter had a little bit of room up there and got his, I think he has enough for the first down, Todd. Yeah, they got a little bit better spot than 
what was originally indicated by the linesman coming in. <laughs> that wet hair. <laughs> Short. Hey, I finally got one. Did you get that right? <laughs> you did. Well, about that far, but it's the uh, fall down snap here. Yeah, this is the old uh, quarterback sneak time. See who can dig in the deepest with the footing down there and get a little push at the line of scrimmage. And most of the noise is not coming from Stanford fans yelling for them to go for it, but from Husky fans urging the defense. Pasani leans forward and should have enough. Yeah, he. Yeah, he'll give him, oh yeah, they'll give him an easy spot on that. Well, he's a big quarterback as well, 230 pounds. <laughs> oh, gonna That's measure. Interesting. I don't think there's any doubt on this one. Even I don't know why they're bothering, but. <laughs> Tyrone Willingham can't figure it out either. You know, Sonny, one of the most interesting things when you look at stats is the difference in this Stanford offense when Fasani is able to play versus when he's out of the lineup. Without him, they average 7.6 points per game. With him, they've got averaged 27 and a half, and they get more than 110 yards of total offense per game more when Fasani is in. That's a nice stat right there with 20-some points. and. Uh, you can see why Willingham would like him in the ball game. Husky offense sputtering thus far on its possessions. Pasani has the Cardinal in scoring range for the second time. Looking to throw once again deep middle and behind his intended receiver. A little bit of confusion that time because Luke Powell turned the wrong way. He was open. But receiver and quarterback didn't get on the same page. Well, this field, when it gets a little moisture on it, gets a little tricky to uh, break out of your uh, route on, and that time you saw that with Powell. They'll regroup it once again. There's a little confusion. The Huskies got a break as well because the DBs headed the wrong direction on that one and left a man open. Little draw this time. That's going to take it inside the 20-yard line. Casey Moore, the ball carrier, listed as the starting fullback. Well, Casey Moore is a big back. He's only lost three yards in all his carries this year, so you know he's going to be heading north and south, I believe, at this stadium, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it reminds you in some ways uh, a little bit of Pat Conniff just in the way he turns things into positive yardage always. Cardinal a little better than 40%, but so far unsuccessful today. Out of the spread. Time again for Fasani and a hole up the middle. Flag thrown, it's coming back. He'll have enough for the first down. You see the call against Stanford, grabbing the line that allowed him to break free. Well, if you look at Marcus Roberson's jersey, you could probably understand there may be a holding call down there. <laughs> you mean he's number 908 now? <laughs> yeah, with yeah. The, okay. All I know is that's a long jersey. Tyrone Willingham, he always looks calm and collected on that sideline. Holding offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still third down. Yeah, you saw it in there, right there, the official right on top of it. It actually had Ryan Julian and Marcus Roberson in the same area. It's hard to tell who they yeah. really called that on. Yeah, there are a couple different ones. Our old friend, Walt Wolf, throwing the flag on that one. He's the umpire today on this crew. Jim Rennie's the head linesman, Roger McMinn, the line judge, Matt Gilchrist, the field judge, Ben Pope, the side judge, and Gary LaFour's the back judge. A draw for Carter. Down to about the 25-yard line. The Huskies all up signaling. Nope, you haven't gotten there. Curtis Williams up there to make sure he's short. Omari Lowe also there. So now an interesting conundrum, and they will go ahead and bring Bazelli on. I mentioned before, 
he has not been successful at distance this year. His longest field goal of the season is 30 yards. And he is 0 for 2 beyond 40. This one a 42 yarder. Has the distance and gets it. So he finally gets a long range one. And the Cardinal hikes it to a 6 0 lead in the closing seconds of the first quarter. We'll be back with more after this timeout on Fox Sports Net. The tree, quiet for a moment, but busy celebrating with the rest of the Stanford band as the <laughs> Cardinal has a 6-0 lead. If a tree falls in an empty football stadium, oh, anyway. Johnson again at the one. And again, has some room to that left side. He's taking them both back that direction. Spilled just over the 20-yard line. Simba Hodari on the tackle for the Cardinal on the return you see the scoring the the drive First down, for Washington. the Cardinal coming after the interception by Friedrichs so with the hold on the return the Huskies find themselves in a hole once again as they have just not been able to get untracked offensively thus far well you know it's uh, interesting on that kickoff it you look at the wedge up front Todd and sometimes you get so close to that wedge that you don't allow yourself an opportunity to have scenes open up for you and Unfortunately, it wouldn't have mattered anyway with the penalty. Option from the 10, and Tui bouncing off his own lineman gets out to about the 14-yard line, however. Friedrichs there with some pressure defensively along with Austin Lee, a senior from Post Falls, Idaho, for Stanford. That'll end the first quarter of play. Stanford has had the ball for most of the quarter, and the Cardinal have the only points. It's 6-0. And we welcome you back to the start of the second quarter. The Cardinal leading at 6 0 as we return to action. Second down and long for Washington. Alexis, the single running back this time. And tripped up just as he was headed towards open territory. Lee on the stop once again. Coy Wire coming up to support it. One quarter of play and uh, Sonny, a lot of numbers in Stanford's favor, especially time of possession, which has always been a Washington hallmark under Rick Neuheisel. Well, if you watch Husky football lately, it's been a trait of the dogs to get this slow start in the first quarter. Somehow that doesn't really surprise me right there. <laughs> I don't know whether you could call it slow so much as glacial so far. Yeah. Now a flag thrown before the snap and it's coming from the far side of the field. Substitution infraction, perhaps? Let's see. Whatever it is, Gordon Reese is enjoying it. <laughs> he always does. There is no foul on the play. That's why. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's why you got a kick out of it, I guess. No harm, no foul. Didn't snap the ball. Nothing was revealed, so. All right. Tyrone Willingham trying to solve that one. Really, I think, Sonny, about the first third and short that Washington's enjoyed in the ball game. First, the running back gets the call, and he's not going to get there, I don't think. 
A little bit of good line surge, and Lee and Wire there once again to team up. I think he went over the hump enough to pick up the first down, but uh, Willie Hurst has been running really hard. He knew he had to come in and contribute today with Paul Arnold not making the trip. And the, the junior there from Compton, California. Yeah, Willie got a lot of looks in practice that week, or this week. Patrick Reddick coming into the lineup this time for Justin Robbins. Reddick will go to the top of the screen. Draw for Alexis. Wire coming up into the gap once again in a hurry. He does a nice job. Maybe part of that's that old running back heritage, but he's able to make that read. Well, you see Washington really running that ball up the middle with Alexis trying to get something established with that up with the down, excuse me, the offensive lineman against the down lineman of Stanford. But so far they haven't really had any big runs from that position. Yeah, seven carries for Alexis and just 17 yards thus far. Quick slant and Elstrom has it and the first down drags the pack with him. Well, <laughs> Fernandez well, leading the tacklers, but that's what Washington needs in the attack, Sonny. Oh, there's no question you've got to throw the football. Everybody's been talking about stretching the field, but a lot of times, one-on-one -on -one like that with a big receiver like Todd Elstrom, get him the football, let him gain another 10, 15 yards on his own. You see a little bit of difference, though, where Carter was able to get a hand in against Robbins and help force that deflection. He couldn't make the strip that time. Elstrom shielding him and the experienced hands of Todd Elstrom getting the first down. Well, Todd's had to step it up a little bit, be the leader out there with that receiving crew. A little stumble by Tui, and now it's all bottled up. Tank Williams up around the helmet wrestles him down. Wow. Well, that one looked ugly from the get-go with Tui Asasopo stumbling out from the blocks. But Tank Williams, you know, he's been around a long time. He makes a good play on the outside. Lost his footing a little bit, and boy, it didn't look good from right there. Stanford was all over, <laughs> especially Tank Williams. Trying to make Tui the headless horseman for Halloween. Well, there's no one to pitch to either. Rich Alexis was covered real well on the outside. Plenty of time this time. Now under some back pressure. Elstrom, the grab, first down and into Stanford territory. Marcus had some pressure with Johnson breathing on his back, got it off in the nick of time. <laughs> has a few words of encouragement and a slap on the behind for Johnson as he sends him back up the field. Oh, you know, he steps up in the pocket, but it's a nice battle. Dominic Dasty right there blocking strong, and Jeremy Stevens as well, and Rial Johnson. But this is what I like. Look at that catch. Going up and getting the ball high with his hands. Todd Elstrom again with a nice big play for the Huskies with a second and long. You saw the slip by Carter again. Elstrom, who runs such great routes, could be a big advantage on this slick field today. Well, the offense should have an advantage on a slick field. Oh, good down block this time, and Marcus getting wrapped up. Alexis was supposed to be there, I think, and again, something happened. They ran a little different blocking scheme on this, but uh, all of a sudden, there was no option. Well, that's one option you can have as a defense. You either take the quarterback out on every play. That time, you see... The missed block on the end of the line of scrimmage, which allowed Ryan Fernandez to come out and take Alexis out, and then it's Marcus on his own to the corner. They had a great down block from the wide receiver to get one man, but yeah, as you said, Fernandez was left alone, and all of a sudden the timing was blown again. Conniff back in in front of Alexis now. Looked to be a jump on the line that time. Flags thrown, Marcus looking long. Elstrom leaning, couldn't make the grab. Carter there on the coverage that time and a little bit of a height advantage for the Huskies if they run that way again. Elstrom at 6'3 to Carter's 5'8, but it looked that time as though Sam Benner had jumped offside on the line for Stanford. Yeah, free play, you might as well throw it deep and you saw Reuben Carter recognizing the penalty and just started taking off running downfield and preventing Elstrom from making the grab. Defense, five yards to the previous spot, still second down. Well, that's a good heads-up play by the quarterback, Tuiasa Sopo, to change up that snap count a little bit, Todd. You know, you want any advantage on a day like this. If you get five yards free from the defense, you, you work that snap count. 
and with a second and short here, a little bit of a, a luxury down, so to speak, if you decide to go to things. Tui in the shotgun. And gives to Hurst. He'll pick up a couple. Willie Howard came through the line to get a piece of him there. And Coy Wire coming in to help wrap him up along with Anthony Gabriel. Well, Willie Howard can get a piece of just about everybody. <laughs> He's so big on that line of scrimmage for Stanford. But again, Willie Hurst running the ball real hard, kind of a little quick draw out of the shotgun formation. We haven't seen a lot of that this season, but the Huskies are going to it today. There's a look at the Lombardi Award semifinalist making his 42nd straight start. Has never failed to start a game in his Stanford career. Boy. So he back under center on third and short. Conniff on the dive. Good line surge as well and a first down for the Huskies. They really got off the line very well that time, Sonny. Good snap count. Well, you look at the offensive line. Look at Willie Howard, 77. Dominic Dasty right there pushing him back. Got leverage on him up high in the shoulder pad. Drove him back and Pat Conniff able to pick up the first down. And, you know, last week Dominic Dasty came into that ball game and really handled Wasdorp. Uh, in the last week's game against Cal, and you see him getting some good leverage today against a guy like Willie Howard. Howard uh, appearing to kind of collect thoughts a little bit there. Now you see first downs for the Huskies. They've got four of those six here in the opening minutes of the second quarter. So this drive really uh, has been more effective than all of Washington's first quarter offense. Amazing how a couple good passes can open things up. First, bounces through one tackle and takes it inside the 30, close to first down yardage once again. He ran right through the arms of Sam Benner that time. Well, you know, we started to say about the, you know, the draws and stuff that the Huskies are running up the middle. They continue to do that. However, the offensive linemen are starting to get a push on those defensive front people for Stanford. And you're right, Todd, you complete a couple passes, all of a sudden, you know, the line's getting a little more confidence and able to blow off the ball. A little over four a carry now for Hurst. Most of it coming on that last one. And again, look like a jump on the Stanford line. It's Hurst to about the 23-yard line before Tank Williams brought him down with some help from Aaron Fott. Yeah, the officials could have thrown a flag on that. It appeared he did not get back in time. No call, but a nice running play that time by the Huskies. And again, Willie Hurst, I have a feeling we're going to call his name quite a bit this afternoon. A little he, bit of a chat right there, Chad Ward talking with Gordon Reese. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure Gordon Reese was all ears to Chad Ward. <laughs> I think Gordon just played that one like a soccer referee. He played advantage and let him go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another first down for Washington as they head towards the red zone. And Tui with a check off now at the line of scrimmage. Little out route. Robbins driven back outside the 20, but they'll give him progress. Carter on the tackle. Thrown a little bit behind Justin Robbins, but you see Robbins using his hands a little bit better on the ball that time. That's a good play on first down. You pick up a good solid five, six yards, five and a half yards, and get yourself, get yourself out of those second and third and long. It's been a few weeks since we've had a chance to call some game action but one guy we're not seeing often and because defenses are keying on him is Jeremy Stevens in situations like these. Well they've had to resort to Jeremy Stevens uh, doing so much blocking on the line of scrimmage with the defense is bringing so many people may look for him right now in the red zone. You see the improvement for Tui Asasopo on this drive. First wrapping the ball up breaks free. He's gone. Touchdown Huskies. I tell you what, you look up at the line of scrimmage on this play, and you're going to see Willie Howard, but you're also going to see Chad Ward. Look at the left side. He's right there when he broke it back, Chad Ward absolutely blew Willie Howard back off the line of scrimmage. And, and that's a heads-up play by the junior running back. Seeing the break back, he breaks back. He knows where the open field is and goes into the end zone. Yeah, beautiful job of finding the seam that time by Hurst for his second touchdown of the season. John Anderson on to attempt the extra point to give Washington its first lead. And does so. So after not finding any keys to beating the, the Stanford defense in the first quarter, 
The Huskies are able to take it down the field and take the lead for the first time. Hurst's touchdown run capping the scoring for Washington. Washington on top for the first time today. Hurst with his second touchdown run of the year, getting some congratulations along the sidelines. 89 yards on the drive as opposed to 36 yards of total offense in the entire first quarter. And Hurst with a nice cutback for the score to give the Huskies their first lead. Anderson set to kick off and pops another short one. Fair catch signaled for by wire. He runs into his own man at about the 23 yard line. So uh, again, a little choice there by the Huskies not to kick deep as we take another look at Hurst's run. Well, you look at the left side, we talked about Chad Ward against Willie Howard, but look at the right side of the offensive line and Dominic Dasty right there on Matt Leonard. And you see Elliot Silver's downfield ready to hit somebody as well, but nice cutback. That's great vision by a guy like Willie Hurst running right by Tank Williams. Tank Williams looked like he was stuck in cement on that play. You see Hurst with 35 yards, all of it coming on that scoring drive. Interesting strategy on special teams. We'll have to keep an eye on that as we go along. Asani under some pressure, completes a little slant in route to Luke Powell, wrapped up immediately by Williams. Well, it looks like Stanford's going back to what has really been the, the game plan on the farm, and that's throwing the football. That time with five receivers, again, from the shotgun set, much like the Huskies were trying in the first quarter. Great man coverage by Curtis Williams that time. All over Wrapping Powell. up Powell in a hurry. First pass completion of the game for the Cardinal coming midway through the second half. You see the overall numbers for the third leading tackler on this Husky defensive unit. Allen once again, oh, he got hit in the backfield. Williams got to him, shot through, and Curtis knocked him off stride. All right, that last graphic we saw, the TFL from Curtis Williams with three, you now put that up to four. See him crowding the line of scrimmage. Jamon Willis taking on the blocker, allowing Curtis Williams a knife through. Great job to get to the running back in the backfield. Oh, look at the nice explosion on Allen that time. Forces Stanford into a passing situation with a two-back set still. Emery Brock in this time along with Allen. Little fly route down the sideline. And then, boy, I thought they were going to get a flag there for a minute. Daryl Daniels covering that time on Brian Allen and really didn't appear to make the turnaround at all, Sonny. No, a good pass, and it could have been picked by the Huskies. That wasn't a very good choice to throw the ball to. And you saw Fasani right there talking to his receiver to be Allen, but they definitely were on the same page. If he'd floated that a little bit more, you mentioned the Huskies could add a pick. Omari Lowe was heading over that direction. Bizelli on to punt to Ray Butler back deep. Blocked. Got a piece of it, it sounded like. Yes, yep, the Huskies did. are all the sidelines saying get away from it. I think that was Owen Biddle again who got in a left arm on it. <laughs> 43, Owen Biddle. Yeah, you can tell he's, he's in a little <laughs> bit of pain right there, but that was like a basketball block practically. He still had a defender in front of him and just reached out. Bazelli seemed to be rolling a little bit, much as we've seen Dick Tomey do with his punter at Arizona, and ran right into Biddle's block. It'll be a Washington ball at the 45-yard line. <laughs> See Randy Hart there talking to those big guys up front. Marona had him, Roberson. Randy never gets too animated on those sidelines. <laughs> yeah, such a low-key guy. Play action to a man open. Elstrom nearly picked. Let it float just a little bit, and Tank Williams broke well. 
And again, just as you've said before, a hair behind him made that chance even better for Williams. One thing I believe that Tui needs to do is and get rid of the football a little quicker. Right here, he's set up to throw the football, football, but it's got to be a little quicker snap. When you've got a guy like Tank Williams eyeballing the out route there, you better get rid of it anticipation of your receiver. They've already grabbed one today, the deflection that Friedrichs had for the interception, setting up a Cardinal field goal. You know, the quarterback's got to plant that foot hard and get rid of the ball. Oh, nice grab. Elstrom with the grab, and then pushed out of bounds by Ryan Fernandez. I think Rick Neuheisel would like to have two or three guys with those hands and that ability right now just to be able to spread things around a little bit. Right there, the clearing route, and uh, Todd Elstrom going to the outside against Fernandez, and you're right, you know, he does such a good job of concentrating on the ball into his hand. Lost big shoe. Yeah, big difference, though, to make it a third and four. And as you said, unfortunately, though, he's got to check out. 40% third down completion rate. Well, in that play, you had Jeremy Stevens and three wideouts on the formation. A quick step drop. And I tell you what, you better get rid of that ball and have a high delivery on the football because those guys up front you just jump up and they eyeball you and they knock it down that time Stanford did. Fleming to kick once again it's Pitts back to return for the Cardinals Rick Neuheisel watches on. A little less pressure up the middle and he floats another good one Pitts signaling fair catch there's a flag. At this rule I understand the need for it, but it allows a receiver like Pitts or somebody else who's smart to signal for that fair catch, then move toward the ball and drag you into the halo. I totally support the need to return a run, uh, protect a returner, but somebody's got to come up with a little bit better plan because you can really trap a return man and a cover man into this almost every time if you want to and get your five yards. watch he keeps drifting seeing all of a sudden all of a sudden full out run there's nothing you can do now it, yeah is it the the defender coming down or the receiver I don't know about that call there Todd. you got a guy blocking and it, as I said I, I think it's real easy as a return man we see it week after week. violation of the two yard belt against the kicking team that penalty is declined because the play was a touchback first down Stanford yeah I'm, I'm with you on that one I still say, and I've said it before, we just go to the CFL rule. Five-yard barrier, but you got to run it back. No <laughs> fair catches. I like that. Yep. All right, because it's a touchback, the Cardinal will take it on the 20, which actually gives them better position. Long time by Fasani at the line this time before tossing to Carter. They get about six before he's wrapped up. Greg Carruthers in to make the stop that time. Yeah, there's a few new people uh, personnel-wise for the Huskies. You've got Jerome Powell in there, and that time he wasn't able to get outside to help out on the tackle too much. You see Tyler Crambrink in there, Jamon Willis, Jerome Stevens on the left. Well, with 5.40 to go, you hope the Husky defense right now can uh, get Stanford in another third and long situation. Carter once again over to the left side. Carruthers meeting him and stopping him apparently just short. Well, let's see where they'll spot this one, though. Nope, it's a first down. Going to give him the spot out over the 30. Well, Carter's a big guy, so he's got a little uh, power going up there, and knocking the pile back for the first down. Yeah, Tyrone Willingham, much like Rick Neuheisel, likes having that running back by committee scheme, but Carter at 6'2", 235, and just a sophomore, he impressed us a year ago in Seattle. Well, he averages over four yards a carry for the season. Today, three and a half. Got just enough to pick up the first down. Carter once again ran right into Larry Triplett that time who was controlling the line of scrimmage. 
Stevens in to help as well, but that was pretty much Larry <laughs> off the get-go. Yeah, it's uh, Larry Triplett time in the middle. Especially with the four receivers set, you expected a pass play that time. Stanford elects to go with the run. Good job by Jerome Stevens as well in there to knock down Carter. So you're going to see double and triple teams on Larry Triplett this year. And he still is able to fight them off. That's the thing that constantly amazes me. Carter, just a couple again. Stevens able to scramble to the outside this time. Farms helping as well. And Carruthers a little bit angry back in the uh, backfield. Somebody took a pop at him. And he's having to be calmed down a little bit by the officials. He's got that freshman enthusiasm. And Greg Carruthers has been playing pretty well all year as a true freshman coming in there. From Capitol High in Helena, Montana. Cardinal looking now for its first third down conversion of the game. They're 0 for 5 so far. Again, Fasani trying to find an open man and throws the incomplete, looking for Powell along the sideline. I tell you, that was great coverage that time. Anthony Von Tour, who did not start the game, is in there now at corner, was all over Powell. It had to have been a pretty good pass on the run by Fasani. A little slick out there, but again, that ball way outside. And I'll tell you, the other factor in that play, the guy we haven't even called hardly at all, is Durrani Pitts. So you know the Husky secondary, as you see, just one pass completed thus far. The Husky secondary is doing a good job of taking Stanford's favorite receiver out of the play thus far. Fazelli getting one away this time. Butler's going to let that one bounce. And it'll be down by Williams at about the 27-yard line. So the Husky defense making life tough for Stanford. And we'll see if Washington can get some more points on the board to close out the first half. Huskies with the ball at the 27-yard line as we come back to action. After an 89-yard touchdown drive in their last possession, Hurst running once again up the middle. Another great job by the center of that Husky offensive line. Fought and Williams combined to stop him, but he got nearly nine on that one. Well, some big dogs up front right there. Matt Fraze this time with a nice block in the middle. But what I really like is Willie Hurst running with a, a vengeance here. He's just powering those legs and trying to get as much as he can. But well, look at the hole. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he's seizing the opportunity, but boy, the center of the line's just done a they, tremendous job, and they do it again. First down out over the 40-yard line, and it's the backs having to come up and make the tackles for Stanford. Well, coming into the ball game, I felt that the Husky line eventually would dominate the football game. But they've kind of stepped it up here in the second quarter. You wouldn't, you, you look at the first quarter, Todd, and, up, and so far in the second quarter, two totally different offensive lines. Yeah, I was going to say, those two possessions have been the best job of blocking we've seen from this offensive line in quite a while. Under some pressure, gets away from Howard and has the corner. Johnson will chase him out of bounds there. And then everybody goes sliding on that slick tarp. Well, they, they put that slip and slide in earlier yeah. today. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised, though. I wouldn't be surprised if the band goes on that thing at halftime <laughs> while they're at it, now that they've seen how well that works. Yeah, look at that. Well, I tell you what, if they didn't have that, it'd be a total uh, pit on those sidelines. See, you now the Husky one's even emptier since they've just got the traveling road squad. There's a lot more room for that. <laughs> slip and slide. I think we'll send you down there in the fourth quarter. Okay, I got the good tie on to do it. Marcus scrambling for seven on that one. Looking over the middle for Stevens. Makes his first catch of the game inside the 40. Beat two men again. Tank Williams and Ryan Fernandez were both there and Jeremy Stevens still gets open and makes that grab. Jeremy out in the route. You see him coming a little mud on his helmet, but Tui Asasopo, I believe, was going with him the whole way. You see him eyeballing him, 
laying the ball in there. Fernandez not able to get there in, in time. But you look at Tank Williams, look at the size difference right there. Just absolutely great pass, a nice catch. Yeah, it's been a frustrating stretch for Jeremy. He is a marked man whenever he tries to get out for a pass. All kinds of guys lined up to try to take a pop at him. First again, left side this time. Broke it back to the inside with Coy Wire in his face and again turns it into about a five yard gain. Well, it's not been a, any mystery of what defenses are trying to do. You shut down, we heard Tyrone Willingham talk about that man, number 11, Tuyasa Sopo. You stop him, they feel they got a good chance, but you also take away their other downfield threat, and that's Jeremy Stevens. Yeah, but this has been power football. This has been straight ahead what Willie Hurst has done thus far. He's got to be a little mystified at how to stop this part of it now. Strong output by the Huskies here in the second quarter. Slant route, Elstrom nearly got his head taken off that time by Reuben Carter. Nice job by Reuben Carter. See Tuyasa Sopo wheel around those feet, get him squared, point to the receiver, throw the ball. Just good timing that time. Carter is all over it. Yeah, again, a possible catchable one. A little bit high into the shoulder. Stanford fans, the players over on the far sideline trying to get this crowd fired up a little bit. Trying to keep the Huskies off the board before halftime. With time wide open, Elstrom breaks a tackle inside the 20. Fought finally dragging him down along with Wire. That's the thing, Sonny, that we've talked about, how these short routes can turn into long gains with some good ability. That's right. We've seen the, a couple of these to Todd Elstrom. We've also seen one knocked down at the line of scrimmage. But right here, there's a little alley to throw the football. See the quickness of getting rid of that football before the defense can get their hands up. Right there, boom, he fires the ball right into the gut of Elstrom. And he's a big target. Look at how tough it is for Coy Wire to bring him down. To the 16-yard line, Elstrom with a good first half. Huskies have all three of their timeouts remaining. And again, off play action all day for Marcus. He just needs to find somebody. It's Stevens. He'll break away from Fernandez, finally getting some help to knock him out of bounds at the 13. It was like watching the Lilliputians hang on him there for a minute. Anthony Gabriel came up to help. Well, Jeremy was open the whole time in the flat. I'm not quite sure why it took so long for Marcus to locate him. But right there, look at Fernandez try to bring him down. You're not gonna bring him down tackling him up near the numbers. Coy Wire coming over to knock him down, but uh, he's I, a big guy. I thought we weren't supposed to have those mismatches in age group football anymore. <laughs> Huskies taking a timeout to talk things over with Rick Neuheisel. Stevens catch will give them a second and about five when we return to Stanford Stadium after this. No, you are not in Seattle. They just traveled very <laughs> well this week. Very well. Yeah, a lot of Husky fans down here in the Bay Area, and that's the Stanford side. <laughs> not so many people. We said it's been a noisy Husky crowd. The team headed their way. They're looking to have something more to cheer about. First, going to be wrapped up. For a loss of yardage, Coy Wire on the stop and a timeout taken again by Washington. That's their second. We saw that red zone statistic a minute ago about the Washington offense. But what's even more amazing is if you look at the red zone statistics for the Stanford defense so far this season, their opponents, as we see the total yardage now, Washington doubling up Stanford with this big second quarter. The Stanford defense has allowed opponents in the red zone 20 times this season. 19 of those times the opponents have scored. It's the worst red zone defense in the conference. Well, they they certainly, uh, it, when you get inside that red zone, a lot of things can happen. And some of their games this year, it's been some big plays getting them in the end zone. And the Huskies right now, when you're looking inside the 20 yard line, a lot of times you're gonna look for guys like Jeremy Stevens. 
So we might want to look for a little bit of that from the offense right now. But that red zone, you know, Todd, a lot of things, a lot of things happen down there, and uh, it's really tough on the defense. But a lot of times, if you're if you have a first and ten, like inside the ten, you'd rather be further out because you got passing lanes you can throw the ball to. Well, how about the second quarter this Husky offense has put together thus far? I mean, they'd love to cap it with another touchdown right here, but they really, after getting bottled up for the opening 15 minutes, moved the ball very, very well in this frame. With time, scrambling, runs right into Rio Johnson. Willie Howard is also there. Bit of a coverage sack, and that time Marcus ran right into the two linemen. Huskies are apparently going to let the clock run down so that Anderson's field goal attempt would be the final play of the half. Well, Rial Johnson's going to act like he really got a sack there, but it really was Marcus Tuyasa Sopo electing to go the wrong direction when he felt he needed to scramble out of there. Right there, Willie Howard and Rial Johnson right into their mitts. And the Huskies will take their third and final timeout with three seconds left. Bit of a frustration there for Marcus and the offense as they'd hoped to punch it into the end zone one more time. But John Anderson will come on to kick on this rainy natural turf. Well, it's hard to tell on the screen right there, but it is really coming down right now. And you see Tuyasa Sopo trying his hands off. I'm sorry, Todd, go ahead. No, go ahead, Sonny. We I was just going to say, it's probably best he took the sack rather than try and do something he, he shouldn't or to try to do too much and get hit and cough up the wet football. There's the big key right now, Cody Pickett keeping his hands dry on this snap. This will be a 34-yard attempt. Anderson is 2 of 4 between 30 and 39 yards. He hit 3 out of 4 last week against Cal. Well, it's interesting, uh, the official not even having a towel to cover the ball while it's laying on the ground. They used to do that in the old days, Todd. I don't know, it must yeah. be a towel shortage. <laughs> well, maybe Cody took it. All right, once again, well, they back Cody pick it up about a half yard. It's 34 to 35, depending on how you want to take it. Anderson's kick. Ah, uh, the pause that refreshes. John Anderson says, so much for your gamesmanship. And we'll go to the locker rooms after the world's longest delay between snaps. <laughs> Anderson's 35-yarder caps the first half of play, the only touchdown in the half, a 17-yard scoring run by Willie Hurst. And at the break, it's the Huskies 10, the Cardinals 6. At Stanford Stadium, both teams back out on the field as we get set to start the third quarter of play following a very good second quarter performance by the Washington Huskies. Let's take a look at some of the numbers from halftime. As we said, Washington sort of sputtered in the first quarter of play, but Sonny, look at what that second quarter did for the Huskies. Nearly a two to one dominance in terms of total yards and they regained time of possession. Oh, there's no question that second quarter that seemed like they got on all cylinders and had a nice long touchdown drive and culminated with that nice field goal from Mr. Anderson to get him 10 points. So the Huskies had the ball just four minutes, 44 seconds in the first quarter. So it shows you almost 11 minutes in the second quarter. The ball belonged to Washington. Stanford will have it to start this third quarter of play as John Anderson will get to sit, set to kick off. I was watching him in pregame. Let's see if he pooches another one here. Up, he's going to go deep this time as uh, Ryan Wells averages nearly 25 a return, but they'll kick it to Eddie Gales instead to open the half, and he slips right at about the 20-yard line. John pooched that one early in the ball game, and uh, in warm-ups in pregame I saw him go, and I thought, boy, he's shanking the ball. 
We take a look at what the teams did. And remember, Stanford took advantage of the interception and uh, was able to get a couple of field goals. And after that, they were shut down by the Huskies, Sonny. Well, the defense really stepped it up, and Stanford ran the ball a little bit successfully early on, but in that second period, not able to run the ball. And I've never seen a Stanford team to throw this few of passes in a first half. And Stanford's leading receiver, Durrani Pitts, there at the bottom of your screen has been bottled up thus far. Low coming in on a blitz. Hassani incomplete. Against miscommunication, Stewart is tight end, the nearest man to the play that time. I thought Omari was gonna get two until he checked off and ran around the backside. Yeah, you see Randy Fasani going out right away to talk to his receiver, but QB comparison, Tuyasa Sopo in that second period, I believe seven out of 10. And, and just one completion in the game for Fasani, and that one going to Luke Powell. We mentioned to Ronnie Pitts how important he is. He has 42% of all of Stanford's receptions for the year. That's a phenomenal number. He's again at the bottom of your screen here on second down. The draw delay to Allen, scuttles through a couple tacklers. Madabi gets a hand on him. Daniel's also helping along with Julian. Husky defenders are gonna have to really wrap up the running backs for Stanford. It's really slick down there right now in those uniforms. You better have a good hold. It is slick everywhere. Although the breeze has gone away and it's not raining quite as hard as it was in the first half. It's going to be a wet track for the remainder of this one. Allen, the single set back. Looking over the middle, Pitts juggles, but makes his first catch of the game to get the first down. Low on the tackle. The Pac-10's leading receiver with better than seven catches a game. Look how far Durrani Pitts has to go. Right there, Omari Lowe looked like he was in pretty good shape. Kind of went lackadaisically there for a moment, and Fasani with a perfect throw. Durrani Pitts is one of those guys that seem like he's been here at Stanford forever. Climbing up the Pac-10 charts with his catches. Allen, triplet got off his block in a hurry and wrapped him up that time. Tyler Crambrink also there. I'll tell you, Larry Triplett, we talk about when he makes some big plays, but he's these little ones that are so huge. Well, look at the spin move that time. Larry Triplett getting into his own playbook. You talk about the swim move, the power rush. That was a nice little uh, pirouette type move. I'm going to tell him you called it a pirouette. <laughs> well, you know, it, uh, he asked me to mention that. Okay. <laughs> He's just having a great year all the way around. Allen again, left side. Looked to be a hold out along the edge, and yeah. there is a flag. I was watching away. I didn't see the flag till the last minute, but when you see uh, Jafar Williams being wrestled down to the ground, I think it's kind of a giveaway. Well, Russell Stewart, to tie it in for Stanford that time, had a nice bulldog move on Jafar Williams. Yeah, there's one right there, too. They had it on Massey, but there was another huge hole to the right of that to hold you and I both saw on Jafar Williams. They're foul. coming back either Still way. So far, Tyrone's not called a timeout. <laughs> <laughs> He's saving the three for later. For another field goal attempt, yeah. They'll mark it back at the 25-yard line now. Got to give Fasani a lot of credit. Strained ligaments, torn cartilage in his left knee. He's battled back and forth. He's been on the shelf doing a heck of a job. Got banged up again last week, and he's out there playing again. Well, Willingham loves his character, that young man, much like the coaches love Tuyasa Sopo. On the rollout, looking long, underthrown, and Massey was not able to break back on the ball, or he might have had the interception. It was intended for Ryan Wells. I'm sure the Huskies will take a throw by Fasani about 35 to 40 yards on the run downfield. Again, that time coming up way short and not very accurate. If it had been accurate, it could have been intercepted. But the Huskies will take this third and 19, Todd. That's a position they'd love to be in the rest of the afternoon. Make Stanford come up with a miraculous play. Making some personnel changes as Julian comes out along with uh, Daniels and Williams. Stanford one for seven on third down. 
Carter breaking out of the backfield. Blitz, they'll throw underneath and too tall for Pitts. Nice pressure by Lowe as he got right in Fasani's face. The Husky fans celebrating some more. Well, it just shows you what penalties can do to you. And see Larry Triplett last minute recognizing it, but Omari Lowe coming in with the pressure. Wanted to do a little underneath screen, and that time Fasani not having time to make the completion. Vaselli on to punt. Teray Butler back in return formation. Huskies with all 10 up. Now they'll peel. Huskies double team that front Stanford blocker, but the Cardinal are going to have it covered. Flag thrown into it. They're going to have a hold anyway. With two men sandwiching that first out downfield runner for the Cardinal, and they still hold him. That one will come back to about the 25-yard line after the hold. Well, watch the left side. You see two on one right there. <laughs> Hard to tell, but it looked holding like Oshusky was uh, holding the on to back. the jersey. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down, Washington. You're going to go out and double team the guy. There shouldn't be any reason to have to do that. Yeah, I think uh, Nick is, may have been caught twice today with that. So the Huskies will start at about the 25. That'll bring their average start back a little bit more. And after the early struggles, plus the deflected interception that led to a field goal after that Washington got into pretty good swing of things and you see the two out of those three drives accounting for 144 yards of total offense back to power football up the middle on first down and with the way they've run between the tackles thus far there's no reason to not make plays like this to Conniff. well a good thing about having Pat Conniff back is you got the experienced fullback but having the experienced fullback in there Todd Tuiasa Sopo has a lot of trust in that little dive play that they make. And then if he wants to option out, Pat Conniff knows how to not grab the football and delay Tui getting outside on the pitch for the option. So it's good to have Pat Conniff back in the football game. High school and college teammates, and they team up for that short carry on first down. Marcus looking deep sideline now. Man open, Elstrom wrestling for it, incomplete. Fernandez on the coverage that time. Tuyasa Sopo throwing the ball deep, and that was a deep throw, 40-some yards. The Looked thing like I like about it, though, Sonny, it's right in the right spot. Well, it was thrown short, and you had to give Elstrom an opportunity to come back to the football, but more you'd like to see the quarterback throw it to the outside shoulder. That's yeah. the only thing I would say about that throw. And also the receiver has got to, has to give himself room so the quarterback, you, where you're running your route into the sideline, you can adjust to the football. Makes it a third and long situation again. Washington having better success with those thirds as the game went along in the first half. Stevens split in the slot to the left. Marcus again with plenty of time over the middle. First down. Out over the 40-yard line and Mr. Surehands there again. That's a nice play. You got Jeremy Stevens coming across. Clearing it out from the split position. See him right there in the middle. It takes Tank Williams with him. Open. Look at the gap right there for Todd Elsner and for Tuiasa Sopo to deliver the football. Great job by the scheme right there by the coaches to get Jeremy Stevens going across and opening it up. It's Elstrom who's had the best day of any of the receivers on the field thus far. So the lights continue to take effect here at Stanford. And another big first down for Washington. Alexis back in. He'll struggle for about five. Good line <laughs> surge again by the front line. Benner being driven all the way back. Howard back on his heels. I don't know about struggle. That looked like a nice little power move by the big freshman running back. That, uh, that's what you need when the conditions are as they are. And Willie Howard not able to do much. This guy's going to go somewhere someday, that big Willie Howard. Credit Alexis with four. Conniff, a little readjustment now. Alexis juggled the ball for a minute. They tried to rip it away from him as well, but Leonard made a solo play that time. Matt Leonard, Jr., the reserve defensive uh, nose tackle, came in untouched. Well, you go to that deep handoff to the tailback. 
gives guys like Leonard an opportunity to knife through and get a little penetration, disrupt the football play. It's one of the few times we had the one, couple of plays by Real Johnson, but the D line has not done that much for Stanford here in the last few possessions. Huskies, as we said, picking up that third down conversion rate more and more as we've gone along. But another passing situation here. Stanford showing blitz, quick slant. Davis juggled, intercepted. Fought, falls down at the 50 yard line. But again, the young wide receivers of the Huskies a couple times have helped to turn the ball over. And you can't blame Davis completely. It was in traffic, but. Stanford bringing the farm on this play. Tuyasa Sopo having to get rid of it quickly and Wandami Davis trying to make a miraculous catch. Even kick it to himself but not able to do it. And you don't want to do that when you're going towards the middle is keep that ball alive in the air, Todd. Aaron fought with his second interception of the season for Marcus Tuiasa Sopo, the second interception of the day. Both have been off deflections. And we'll see if it gives a somewhat dormant Stanford offense some life here at midfield. Carter wrapped up after about a yard. He was being tackled on his way out of the backfield that time. Daryl Daniels first to get to him. Yeah. He's really turned in a very solid game today. Well, he does pretty much every Saturday, but he's the most consistent defensive player I feel so far this season. The quarterbacks and Tuiasa Sopo and Davis having a brief chat before Marcus heads off the other way. Rain picking up once again now. Slant in off the hands and incomplete. Pitts trying to hang on to that one. Massey on the coverage for the Huskies. Very tight coverage by Chris Massey, but it appeared to be a very catchable ball. Look at the points off turnovers the last two seasons, Todd. I mean, that's a huge difference. 87, this year only 13 points when you get in a, a turnover. They got the one field goal off the first interception today, but it has been a disappointing year. The Cardinal with high hopes coming in, of course, the defending conference champions. Play action, Kelly from the backside, Farms from the front, and they get to him. That play never had a chance. No, no way, not with Big Anthony coming through. Anthony Kelly, 47 from the left side. Little quick play action, but nobody there to pick up anyone. And of course, Fasani did the best thing by losing his footing. He could have been uh, hammered on this play. Yeah, he tried to turn inside Farms to avoid him, and Roberson was there to cover as well. <laughs> Probably fortunate for Fasani. <laughs> for his health, anyway. Yeah. Teray Butler back once again. A little bit of a low snap, and then it's off the side of Bazelli's foot. Yeah. Way off. Yep, that that may go. Let's. I want to see where they spot this one because we may not get positive yardage out of the punt even. They're still walking it, still walking it. Mark it. That is going to be about a seven-yard punt statistically, and the Huskies are going to have the ball at their own 44-yard line after that mistake. So a break for the Huskies. They prevent the turnover from turning into points, and they'll have good field position. Tyrone Willingham, a little disappointed in his special teams play there, giving Washington outstanding field position. And the bad snap really threw this one off. Yeah, Baselli lucky not to put a knee down. But look how low the ball is by the time he makes contact. And straight off the side of his foot, about a 10-yard punt. Yep, threw his timing off and everything, and Washington trying to benefit from it on the sprint out. Justin Robbins takes a big hit from Carter, but picks up a first down. Those are the kind of contributions that the Washington Huskies need from the rest of this wide receiver core. Oh, there's no question. You get the ball out to them, you got to run a good route, 
get open and have your quarterback get you the football. And watch this, nice grab, extension, wide open though. No one in coverage for Stanford on Justin Robbins. You should make those completions. Yep, good call all the way around and had a chance to break it a little further. Elstrom trying to throw a block for him. Alexis once again, straight up the gut. Boy, the holes just continue to develop. I'm maybe overkilling it, but I'll tell you this, Washington offensive line has been strong and consistent since the first quarter of play. They have, they bonded together down there. They're, they're a tight group, they're cohesive, and you can see right now that uh, these guys must get along pretty well off the field as well. But it, coming in, I thought that they could run against the Stanford front. And right now they're doing it, and a little bit of raindrops coming down. Breeze there, the rain there. That's not the sun it's, in the background. It's Seattle That's the weather, right? <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that Barbara Hedges got on the bus, she said, hey, it's good weather. And everybody looked at her as if she were crazy. She said, yeah, it's Seattle weather. Another deflection at the line. <laughs> Willie Howard getting his hands on that one. Yeah, you see Willie Howard may have been a little zone blitz right there, dropping off into coverage. Well, he's a big guy. He can jump back there to look like a big defensive end. Overall series in the Huskies' favor. The last two times that the Huskies have wa lost, they were a ranked team on the road at Stanford. That 1994 win, the last win for Bill Walsh as the head coach here at Stanford. From the gun again, give to Hurst. Breaks to the outside, first down. Boy, they've got the Stanford defense on its heels and confused right now. Big roar from the Husky fans down to our left. Well, a lot of Husky fans have been roaring for a shotgun formation for a while, and today they're seeing it. What do, you, what do you think about it? Well, I think it's great because it gives you a lot more options when you see the quarterback like Tuyasa Sopo getting a shotgun formation. Is he going to throw the ball? Is he going to run the ball himself? But no, today they're doing this. They're handing off to a guy like Willie Hurst that's running possessed this afternoon and, and running with a lot of power. And Real Johnson, the way he vacated, really helped create the hole that time for Hurst and gave the Huskies another big first down. Alexis with Conop leading the way for him. The convoy down to about the 20. Rich Alexis was wrapping up that football. You see both hands around it. I know the young man's had a few problems with that. Oop, Willie Howard down on the ground. Yeah, he got caught in the line surges that time, got bent back a little bit. Trying to pick himself back up. Well, look at those knee braces on that young man. Pat Conop taking a look at him as well. The Huskies with tremendous respect for this senior defensive tackle for Stanford. While he's being attended to, we'll take a quick timeout. Huskies with the ball now at the 20 yard line, a second and short situation, an ideal chance to Look at open that things rain. up here, yeah. In this rain, yeah, you may not want to open <laughs> things up. Alexis toward the outside, well covered that time. Cardinal brought some pressure on the corner. Coy Wire, the first man there, and he came in untouched. Watch the left side, you got Matt Rogers up there blocking, but Rial Johnson in on the play with Austin and Lee. Lee. Yeah. Reddick back in the Husky lineup. He'll split to the bottom of the screen. And another third down challenge for Washington. It's Alexis again. Trying to stretch for the markers. The trench dogs will wrestle him down this time. Johnson and Matt Leonard leading the line surge. 
You see Wire again near the pack, always near the ball. And let's see which way Rick Neuheisel is going to decide to go with this one. About a yard and a half to go, and it will be the field goal team. Anderson trying for his second field goal of the day. This one will be about a 37-yarder. Plenty of distance and nails another one. Who cares about the rain? <laughs> there is a flag down and the Huskies are pointing as though it's against Stanford. I thought I saw movement from the D line again, jumping off. Boy, that could be huge. It is. Now, do you take the points off the board or not? I think Rick Neuheisel says, yeah, let's get the offense out there. Let's see. Come on, Gordon, do something. Offside defense, five yards to the previous spot. That yardage gives Washington a first down. <laughs> Takes him a while sometimes. Another big error by the Cardinal defense. And you see their sixth penalty of the day, and this one allows the Huskies to bring the offensive unit back out. Well, the nose guard tries to intimidate the snap man. Sometimes he gets caught by being over the line of scrimmage. Hurst back in the backfield again. He'll get it, falls down. Tried to cut back and just completely lost his balance. Yeah, you know, these backs just have to understand you're not going to be able to get a cut back that quick on this turf. Yeah, Willie Hurst a little disappointed in himself on that one, but Huskies still have the ball, second and 12 now. Alexis will come back in. Yeah, it's really run between the tackles conditions, isn't it? You oh, just, it just is. Just go straight. Just take what you can and keep your legs moving, and who knows, maybe you could pop through. Well, and Hurst got that one cut back in the first half, so he was tempted to try it again. Option for one of the few times lately. Alexis to the corner. Touchdown, Washington. <laughs> Well, I guess you do take the points off the board, right, Todd? <laughs> <laughs> Am I out of your way yeah, now? Could, could you move so I can see whether he gets in or not? Nice grab well, here. Well, let me tell you what happened. We did an option play, and Rich Alexis scores. Yeah, look at the downfield block, though, that sprung him. That was a great move right there. Alexis carrying it in for the score. And a great call right there on the option. Bringing it back to the four. Alexis tucks it in his eighth of the year and taking the three off pays as the Huskies get another score. Patrick Reddick with a bit of a hug from Alexis as well. Watch the downfield blocking that springs him and the Huskies get another score. Second rushing touchdown of the game, one for Hurst, one for Alexis, and the Huskies are able to make Stanford pay for that offsides on the field goal. 28 yards rushing for Alexis on that drive, and Anderson set to kick off. Into the end zone, and it'll stay there as Gales touches it down. And again, we watch the rushing touchdown for Rick Chalexis and great downfield blocking to spring this when you see his totals for the game now, 14 for 49. Well, they haven't had a lot of success running the option today, but watch Pat Conniff. He gets it started with his block on Tank Williams, 
right there to allow Alexis to get outside. But Pat Reddick downfield, number five on his man, got his hands in tight, which is legal, taking him out of the play. Todd Elstrom threw a similar block last week against Cal. This time it's Reddick. Great downfield blocking by the wide receivers, and they have to sell themselves out to do that. A lot of wide receivers will not do the dirty work, and the Huskies got it right there to allow that one into the end zone. Allen on first down getting stacked up, and now the Husky D can be that much more aggressive against this Stanford lineup. Well, double D again, speaking of the D, Daryl Daniels coming up to make the stop. And <laughs> oh, yeah, it is opened up here now. Well, this is the monsoon. I believe Coach Tom Williams was referring to this past week, and he was right. You know it's bad when the rain's pouring in here on our binoculars and we're inside the booth. Hassani having to try to open things up as well finds Allen. They calling that an incomplete? I thought he made the grab before he went down, but the line judge says no, he didn't have the ball. Yeah, he's juggling just slightly, but my gosh, Fasani has an opportunity to have a great completion. Allen out of the backfield, wide open, with a lot of room to run, and they can't pull the plug and get it happening. Huskies making the defensive substitutions again. He just has not gotten on track all day long. Boy, I, you know, if I was Stanford, I may consider bringing in Chris Lewis, who's a little bit more elusive, running around in the backfield. Although Randy's probably the better passer of the two. But you're right, the mobility of Lewis might help out, especially on a slick field. Trying to go deep middle now for his tight end behind him, and he was falling down. Brett Pierce could not make the grab. He was open, the young man from Vancouver, Washington. Boy, yeah, that was a golden opportunity again. Back-to-back -back plays. Fasani has not come through with the completion. Todd, you and I were looking at the tight end. No one near him. Rough day for him, and look at the rain there on Bazzelli. Remember, he had the last one go off the side of his foot. After the bad snap, he gets a much better pass back this time. Still a short kick. And it'll stay on the Stanford side of midfield. They'll down it at their own 45-yard line. So all things right now going in favor of Washington. Well, Baselli, about a 10-yard kick and now a 25-yard punt. Not great production. Yeah, impressive totals, and as, again, keep in mind, at the end of one quarter of play, it was almost all Stanford in the books. In fact, at the end of the first quarter, the Cardinal had 74 yards of total offense, so they have just 27 yards of total offense since then. Great job by the Washington defense, as they have kept Pisani and his group befuddled, and again, given the Husky O, some outstanding field position. Alexis. Put the head down that time as he saw tacklers coming his way. Marcus Hoover, the first man to get to him for Stanford. Yeah, we haven't called Marcus Hoover's number too many times this afternoon, but that time he's right back there with Rich Alexis. And this is where you just want to hang on to the football, Todd. Let's power it ahead. Let your big lineman dominate and pick up some first downs and run the clock. Yeah, I was just going to say, and let the clock operator keep his finger off the switch. Exactly. That's so much for our strategy. <laughs> Open Alexis out of the backfield, just a bit, bit behind him, Ryan Fernandez on the coverage. That's a tough pass out there in the flat. Rich Alexis, that's a tough angle to receive the football. You almost wonder if they made that call just to force the Stanford defense to open back up a little bit again, just to force them to play on us. Puts the Huskies into another passing situation here, however. And they'll open things up a little bit. Hurst, the sole running back. This looks like a draw play to Willie Hurst. Max protection over the middle and incomplete. Tried to find that little quick slant in again to Elstrom. That's a hard pass in traffic. Well, that's a couple times now and uh, throwing right there in the middle. The Huskies have had interceptions off throws in that vicinity and nearly won that time. Now Ryan Fleming with a chance here to 
hit a little bit of a pooch punt and try to pin the Cardinal back way deep. Pitts in the return lane for Stanford. Fleming doing just that, try to get a little roll on this one. Pitts says get out of the way. And the Huskies able to down it. It'll be the furthest advance for Stanford possible. It oh, they lost it. No, they've got it outside the goal line still, but it should come out to about the four where it was touched because they knocked it back out. Stanford should benefit a couple more yards, and that's what they'll do. Good job by the crew because the ball did come out there. They still have them pinned deep, however. Rick Neuheisel talking to the offense. We watched the punt. Well, nice punt by Ryan Fleming. See the ball go down. I thought Curtis Williams was perhaps too far back to go get up to the football and knock it back into play. But right there where Madavi touches it again, you see now the Huskies advance it there. They can't prop it further. It's the That's deepest That's exactly touch. right. But uh, still, inside the five, they'll take that every time. There the O meeting done. Rick Neuheisel coming over to talk to his offensive team. He almost feels like a bad camping weekend with all that rain and mud down there, doesn't it? It does, and a lot of times, a lot of people would have been gone, and a lot of Stanford fans are gone, but not, not a lot you can do right now. You can't be gone if you didn't come in the first <laughs> place. Man down on the field after Carter's carry. Looks as though it's Curtis Williams. We'll be back to Stanford Stadium right after this. Washington on top of Stanford, 17-6. Back at Stanford Stadium and much of the enthusiasm for the Huskies and their fans tempered a bit right now by an injury to strong safety Curtis Williams, Sonny. Oh, it's a tremendous hit right here. You see him filling the hole against Kerry Carter, but right there he lowers his head. Kerry Carter with 235 pounds running at him, put a lot of stress on him. Looked like he may have been just knocked out immediately. Did not move much during that timeout. Williams stayed on the ground for a long time, was carried from the field on the stretcher. The Huskies had to gather their players together and huddle them up as for several minutes they kept wandering back out to try to take a look at their fallen teammate. We are back in action finally after a long delay and Stanford now has a third and short following a pass completion a moment ago. Huskies got back that time. Carter, the ball carrier, picking his way through for a first down. Flag thrown on the play over on the far sideline. And the Huskies apparently did not get back. It's amazing. The, the, it, the offside, <laughs> did it happen or didn't it, but it came, occurred on this side of the field. See Gordon Reese looking over here, but the far side official calls the offsides. The near, near side does not, but Unless time for the Huskies. Lined up opposite, yeah, yeah, it's time for the Huskies. Far side to defense, five yards to the previous spot, and a first down for Stanford. Awesome had him right there, appeared to be, and it was called first down Stanford. Either way, first down, Carter's carry or the penalty. Well, Watch and see what the Cardinal do to try to open up a little bit here, perhaps. Pitts and Powell both to the left side. Fasani with time looking for Powell, throwing into double coverage. Off his hands, he had to grab it, appeared, and then couldn't hang on. Both Bontour and Akbar were there. Well-thrown ball, and Powell's been the busiest guy today. Good play action again. Fasani, you knew he was going to go deep sooner or later. Powell right there for the grab, but a beautiful throw. He just couldn't hang on to I the think Bontour football. came and stripped it at the last minute. He might have been able to wrap it almost. Good no. cover every which way. Powell's got to come up with those kind of grabs. Put your team in a position to move downfield. 
Yep, they have not had those plays today. Allen now breaks to the outside, and he's close to first down yardage before Akbar finally forces him out of bounds. Nice job of running that time by Brian Allen. He appeared to be bottled up pretty well and then squirted through. There's the toss to Allen as he goes off the right side, breaks the tackle of Willis, and then finally ran out of real estate with some pressure from Akbar. Yeah, you see the block out there in the corner. Jeremiah Farms was taken care of, and looked like Jamon Willis was in a position to knock him down, but didn't, and Carter with the big move. 10 carries for Allen for 60 yards. Excuse me, Allen. <laughs> longest run today, a 22-yarder. And now Fasani is going to have to call a timeout. Not liking something he saw. They have all 11 on the field. Timeout called by Stanford. That means one less that Tyrone can call for the next field goal. We'll be right back. Cardinal come out in a trips formation now as we come back to action on first down, trying to stretch it and give Carter some room. You'll only get a couple. Roberson there along with Triplett. Jeremiah in on the play as well, but Marcus Roberson still being a stalwart up front. Huskies doing a lot of substitutions this afternoon. I'll see it again, second along. Sonny's turn to go out of the shotgun with five wide outs. Quick out, juggled and caught, and it'll be a first down for Stanford. Eddie Gales on the grab. There is a flag down in the Stanford backfield, however. Buffing the passer on a defense, 15 yards from the end of the run. First wow, down. Tack on 15 more, and that'll make it one of the biggest plays of the game for Stanford. Well, certainly Rick Neuheisel doesn't like to see his players out there getting penalized. But you get a free shot in the quarterback, oftentimes you, you just can't stop your momentum and you're going to fly in there. Especially on a wet, slippery field. It was a pretty quick drop that time, getting the ball out to Gales, who juggled it but made a nice grab to pick up some yardage that'll bring the quarter to an end but Stanford has the ball in Washington territory for the first time in a long time the Huskies maintaining possession maintaining clock time and got a nice run from Rich Alexis as well three quarters in the books Washington leads it 17-6 So the Cardinal with the ball at the 41 yard line following the completion and the penalty as we start the fourth quarter of play in Palo Alto. Little play action and Fasani on a naked bootleg is gonna pick up good yardage. Leans for the sticks and it'll all depend on the spot. Akbar finally the first to chase him down. Great call there and you can see the guttiness and grittiness of Fasani as he limps back. No question, naked bootleg, good sell right there. All the Husky defenders are going that way, except for one. And the good thing for the Huskies that Akbar was out there to make the play. You're right. You know, and Randy Fasani has been plus yardage on rushing the football this season. Huskies at 352. Cardinal just 136 yards of total offense. Fasani now with 21 yards on six carries, but he picks up the first down on that one as well. With time again. Long time. Flag thrown in the backfield. That one caught. Yes, low pushing the man out of bounds. Ryan Wells on the catch, but again, a throw and a hold called against Stanford. <laughs> Holding. 
offense. Ten yards to the previous spot. Still first down. See if we can see Marcus Roberson in here. Larry Triplett, look at that. <laughs> nice tackle. Good takedown right there. Sometimes they're easy to spot. Yeah, hate to call his number, but it was 65, Mike Holman. That'll, <laughs> that'll back him up 10 as a result of Holman's effort. Now those poor linemen, we only identify them when they do something wrong. We'll dive this time to the fullback, Casey Moore. Gets much of it back with Biddle on his back. And some late shoving in the backfield between Omari Lowe and Ryan Wells. That brings the loudest noise of the day from the Stanford fans, I think. Well, he's got to play a little more discipline, stay controlled here. A lot of emotions running right now with the injury to Curtis Williams. Yep, an important time for the Huskies to maintain focus right here, not let Stanford drive down the field and get some daylight and back into this game. Looking for the score now for Pitts. And incomplete. Von Tour with some good coverage and Biddle, who's usually had pretty sure hands on a lot of things, couldn't make the grab there. Yeah, Stanford fans looking for contact from Von Tour, but he's clearly had position on that play. Bassani has not really, except for that one pass to Powell early on to Luke Powell, uh, hasn't really been right on on some of these deep throws. Had a lot of time to throw the football. Tenth play of the drive now, and the Cardinal trying to convert once again. Just one out of ten, as you see. Huskies blitzing more on the draw. Von Tour nearly got to him on the exchange, and then they're able to bottle him up well short. Interesting call there on a third and long, Sonny. Well, he hasn't been successful throwing the ball downfield, and uh, the draw play worked well last time. Casey Moore, big, powerful fullback, and Anthony Von Tour almost got back there in time to break that one up yeah, in the backfield. Yeah, di disrupt it, but they also ran the play right to the middle of the field now to give a better alignment for Bizzelli, who hit a season long already in this game, and they're trying to tee it up at just the same spot again, a 42-yarder. Push that one, and it won't go. It's wide to the right. So again, the Cardinal come away empty. Two first quarter field goals, and that's been it so far. Washington will take over with a chance to run some more time and look to salt this one away when we return. Washington with the football following the miss. The Huskies continuing to play well in the fourth quarter. The last two games, of course, uh, big rallies by Washington. A phenomenal fourth quarter against California. And come from behind wins have sort of become a hallmark of the Huskies under Rick Neuheisel. Ten of his 13 victories as a Husky head coach have been come from behind efforts. This one would make another one if the Huskies hang on today. On the option, and Tuiasa Sopo wisely just kind of comes to a stop that time. Hoover in his path and nowhere else to really go with it. Each play also burning a little more time off the clock. Huskies will open it up now as they bring Conniff out. There's a diminishing returns a little bit as you see Marcus not a, effective on a per carry average as he's been in the last couple of seasons. Alexis tightly wrapping up that ball, but again, he's not going to get too far. Not too much opening there in the middle. Stanford's doing an excellent job of getting a push on the defensive front. But Alexis, you're right. <laughs> 
wrapping up the football is the key word right now with the weather the way it is and Wilbur Hooks. That. Wilbur Hooks coming into the Husky lineup sunny and that's a welcome sight for Washington fans. Yeah finally getting back he uh, came back a little early hurt himself a little bit and uh, good to see him back on the football field. Under some pressure spins away from a couple but that's as far as it'll go as he's got his legs wrapped up by Coy Wire. Good job by Stanford's defense that time. A first play by the Huskies losing yardage with two Yasasopo trying to go wide and didn't gain much from there. I can't remember the last time they've had a three and out. It's been quite a while. Fleming on to kick. And does Stanford take a little bit of a gamble here with the clock running? So Ronnie Pitts back. No, it's a Powell this time. Makes a nice grab over the shoulder. And gets mowed down after the short <laughs> return. Nice punt that time, Ryan Fleming. Huskies needed a big kick from him, and they got it. Stanford offensive unit coming out on the field. Fasani chased wide once again, and Pitts making a grab. Just short of the first down, only his second catch of the game. Fasani a little elusive in that backfield, Todd, doing a good job buying himself some time to find the open receiver. See it right here, good pressure. Jafar Williams trying to get in there, and big Larry Triplett running him down, but Durrani Pitts did a good job of settling down right in that zone, allowing the quarterback to find it. I was gonna say, it almost looked like he broke off the pattern and went to open space there. Excellent job by Pitt. Allen, boy, again, the Husky run D stacking him up early. They have to scramble back to finish wrapping him up, but the gap was closed in a hurry. Akbar there. Had him also on top of it, but the run D tough again for Washington. Yeah, Daryl Daniels in there as well to knock down Allen. Lost his shoe. He'll have to head to the sidelines. Look at the rushing yards now with Washington up to 133. Two yard advantage over Stanford. Just 45 second half rushing yards for the Cardinal, however. Quick slant, open his pits again. Boy, if he springs free, a nice open field tackle there by Biddle. They get the first, but they keep it from going for big yardage. Nice little short rollout to his uh, far side there. And Pitts, of course, in the little slot, just going straight to the outside. Man-to-man -man coverage outside with Omari Lowe. Biddle a little late coming up in coverage. Out to the Cardinal 48 yard line. Always nice when somebody moves past Keyshawn Johnson. Pitts <laughs> now in the number five spot in Pac-10 career yardage. And Fasani trying to find some more. That looked like some interference on Von Tour. No flag at all as he jousted back and forth with Ryan Wells. Well, that could have gone both directions and maybe that's why they called it off, but they hooked up early on that pattern. Looked like a cat fight out there with Wells and Anthony Von Chur. Actually, he didn't make any contact with him at all. And he did make a play for the football. Well, they actually did a little bit earlier in it, and there was a sideline oh. warning I think they made against Washington. So, their first warning of the game. Well, that ball was certainly catchable. It should have been caught, actually. Tyrone Willingham's team looking at having to win three out of its last four games just to become bowl eligible after going to the Rose Bowl a season ago. A young team, much of this lineup will be back next year for Stanford. On the draw, it's Carter, he'll be back. Roberson got a piece of him. Ball popped loose, I think. Yes, it's Washington Washington's ball. ball. Stanford coaches on the far side trying to say that he was down on the ground. And well. it's being jointly carried off the field <laughs> that time. Daniels and Kelly. Yeah. Good draw play, good call on second down to pick up some yardage, but 
Hard to tell from there, but there is the old pumpkin laying out there. I think his knee was down that time. Uh, from that angle, it looked like the ball had squirted out prior to him hitting the ground. But either way, the Huskies are fortunate they have the football. I don't know if it's so much forced as a week ago we're given to, but <laughs> however you want to look at it, turnovers have been kind to the Huskies the last couple weeks. Tui on the scramble. That'll go inside the Stanford 40 yard line and it's the first catch of the day for Joe Collier, the junior from Mead High in Spokane. Well, Joe Collier's a big target. We talked about all those other great tight ends, but Joe Collier, 6'7", just like Jeremy Steve. Had a great sell job on that pass play. P pressure from Rial Johnson there, a little love pat. But Joe Collier's a big target and nice throw by Tui on the run. All the way to the Stanford 37 yard line and Collier checking in for that one. First again, he'll get the grab. Time continuing to go ahead. No, Sorry. you're right. I was just going to say the same thing, Todd, that the clock still continues to run. It was a big play by Collier. And now Willie Hurst able to just plow into the pile. Cardinal trying to shuttle some linemen in and out, try to get some fresh legs and force some defensive pressure because the Huskies are close to creeping down within field goal range once again. Shotgun once again now. Fakes to Hurst and takes off. Inside the 30 before Fernandez got an arm on him. Tui saw it work for Fasani, so he decided it could work for me. Takes a little bootleg coming out to the near side, and look how bad he is. He did a great job of keeping his feet, not trying to cut back too sharply to lose it and, and end up with a loss on the play. And also gives it a third in the inches situation, so you would assume here just a little line surge should be enough to pick up the first and take a couple more minutes off the clock. Well, you saw his eyeballs. He was looking at the play clock, getting it down so that the snap of the ball happens within five seconds of the clock. It's Hurst, big hole. That's a first down and more. He tries to run over Carter, and it'll be down to about the 22. Did the smart thing, just lowers his head, runs into Carter, but he's got the ball wrapped up with both hands when he does that. Washington's ground game number two in the conference coming in. Look at the block up front by all the big boys and Jeremy Stevens included right there at the POA. And Willie Hurst running strong. Even Todd Elstrom's down there throwing a block for him downfield. Strong is the real key point, Sonny. I don't know whether we've seen the backs be as aggressive as they've been today. They reset the chains. Tui checking off again. He'll have to hurry a little bit to get this one. Little delay, and it opens a hole for Hurst. Breaks one. He's gone. Touchdown, Washington. Sometimes you get a break <laughs> off that bad timing, huh? I guess you do. I tell you, Willie Hurst has got to be a happy young man today, and I'm sure the offensive line and See Justin Robbins is well happy for Willie Hurst today. Rick Newhiles is really happy. And that's a great stutter step and great move by Willie Hurst. His second score, the third rushing touchdown for Washington today. And it takes Hurst on 14 carries now, 96 yards. So he closes in on a century mark. Anderson's extra point. And a big score there for Washington. The delay worked well. The hole was open and Hurst went the distance.
Hurst with his second score, and it was a little slow in developing, but it actually worked out to Washington's advantage. The scoring drive of 48 yards following the fumble, they turn the turnover into points and really stretch it out on the Cardinal. Well, you see him talking to the guys making it possible. It's all the, the big boys up front, but watch this play. You see Tank Williams coming from the right side on the blitz right up the middle, and there's Pat Conniff taking two guys on, gets blown up a little bit, but Dominic Daste on the left side and Chad Ward. Just had all day. It, yeah, was, it took a while for Hurst to get out and around everybody, but when he did, he was in the clear. Hats off again to that Washington line. There's the short pooch kick once again. Cardinal gonna have one of the back men take it, though Wells was able to get up in time. He's the guy they really didn't want to have handling the ball. And a few smiles on the Washington sideline, a little relief. And the backfield mates. <laughs> you see Pat going, yeah. hey man, I blew up two of them, or did they blow me up? <laughs> Husky coaching staff's glad to have him back, Todd. Uh, it's a big, big difference. I mean, they've, they've had some very steady play from guys like Hart and Ken Walker and Braxton Clemens. Keith Gilbertson up in the box. Probably one of the happiest. The guys in the booth are the happy coaches on days like this because they don't even have the jackets on. They're, they're fine. They're comfortable. Down on the sidelines, it's, as Sonny said, the slip and slide down there. So the Cardinal now having to go into attack mode, and that one incomplete for Wells. Yeah, you can see a little moisture in that football, and uh, there it goes, the flyaway. It's going to be interesting now for Tyrone Willingham just to decide what to do. He's got to open it up, have a dry football, and find something to get his quarterback in rhythm. Well, he noticed that that ball really flew on Randy Fasani, and he wants to make sure those balls are completely dry when they go back on the field of play. Bad snap. Nice pick up there. And makes the completion as well, breaking a tackle. Good He's effort gone. all the way around by Luke Powell. We see some of the speed, but closing to prevent the touchdown. The Huskies will do a good job there and it's Johnson who has missed a lot of practice this week but he comes back shows his speed and he's shaken up on the play he's favoring an ankle but he's able to take Powell out well you see the bad snap right there Randy Fasani doing the right thing going outside knew where all his personnel have to be finds Powell right there who's got the speed but you notice from the left Derek Johnson catches him but hurt re-injures his ankle on the in the process Johnson showed some great feet, uh, speed getting out there to yeah, find Powell. Didn't give up on the play either. It goes for 62 yards, and the Cardinal looking to get its first touchdown of the game. For the end zone for Pitts and on the score. They pick on Johnson a little bit there, but Pitts, a talented receiver, was open, and Stanford drives down the field after not being able to do anything offensively for about three full quarters. They get one big play and get a touchdown. Yeah, all but coming on a bad snap, but Pisani seasoned enough to do the play, and right here with a nice throw to, to Ronnie Pitts, and first score of the day for Stanford as a touchdown. And of course, trying to go for two here to get it back within 10. How many times do you see big plays off of bad snaps, fumbled snaps? It's just amazing to me throughout college football. Breaking up the timing. Allen in motion, flag thrown on the snap. Fasani scrambling all over everywhere. Now open on the backside is Pitts as everybody broke coverage. He makes the catch, but there is a flag thrown in the backfield and it was thrown with the snap. Illegal participation by the defense. Paul oh. Hurst participated. In It'll count. Penalty is declined. The two-point conversion is good. Sonny, this was just a case of Fasani running around long enough until somebody stopped on an assignment and they found Pitts for the conversion. So what looked bright a moment ago gets a little more fraught on the Husky sideline as Stanford finally gets a score.
Back at Stanford, the Cardinal needing a couple of scores at least, and we try onside kick. Husky stepped up, did they touch it? It's still loose. It went out of bounds, it's Stanford's ball. Let's see, wait, now they're calling back and saying no. There is a flag thrown back behind the Stanford team. Did they jump the gun? Were they offsides? Yes. Jump the gun. Boy, things are getting a little crazy here on the farm. I'm a little surprised on the wet field. Washington went ahead and ran up, gambled here, but they tried to scoop the ball up. There you see the last attempt at the cover by Connor. Kicking came was offside. That's a five-yard penalty and a re-kick. Yeah, you might think he would just let it slither on out of bounds. Well, he was the second guy to try to yeah. go after it. Yeah, knock it out of bounds at least so no one gets yes. possession. But Tyrone Willingham up, obviously upset as he talks to Gordon Reese. This could be a big break for Washington right here. And keep in mind there have been several breaks in the Huskies' favor. The field goal that turned into a touchdown because of a Stanford penalty. They'll try it again. Remember, it has to go 10 or be touched. The Huskies wait. That's caught onside. They did it perfect. That's Stanford's ball. That was painless. The Huskies all backed away from it, waiting for it to go 10. When it did, Carter was able to have it plop right into his hands. They couldn't have diagrammed that one any better. Well, look at this kick. Vaselli, nice bounce on that football. And you're right, Carter right in the perfect position to get it. You usually see the guys lined up here. That's the angle that they're going to take. They grab Elstrom and drive him back a little bit, but Conniff backed away from it because it had only gone about eight, and it took that last big hop. Bingo, Stanford ball. It looked like they grabbed Todd Elstrom by the jersey and oh, pulled yeah. him out of the way, Absolutely. not blocked him out of the way. Hassani under pressure, gets away once, gets away twice. Kelly drags him down. Well, now the Husky defense has to really tighten it up here. Just under five minutes to go, and Fasani, man, that guy won't go down. Yeah, you have to give Stanford some credit as they have refused to fold here on a rainy day. Again under pressure, and they're going to wrap him up again. Did he get rid of it? He was down. Okay, I was going to say. <laughs> Looked Tough like he went down football. in mine, and all of a sudden, bingo, they're all screaming <laughs> for a catch. He was down well wrapped up. And they're going to burn another timeout. Wow. So Stanford will be left with one timeout for the stretch drive, but a big third and long situation for the Cardinal when we return. Stanford trying to convert a third and long situation from the Cardinal 41 yard line. Huskies trying to show blitz. Stanford picking it up, looking deep. Pal, incomplete, went through the hands. You can see the frustration right there. Jimmy of Newell. Jimmy Newell, yeah. Well, we've seen that quite often this season, and Jimmy Newell quite upset, uh, upset with himself, but. Golden opportunity there, Todd, to come up with a big pick for the Huskies. Right here, Fasani really just laying it up and for the grabs right there with three defenders in the area. Anthony Von Tour is walking slowly off the field. He's shaken up, again, favoring a foot. He has had foot problems throughout the season. That's limited his playing time. Teray Butler will come in for him, and the Cardinal will go for it here on fourth down.
trips to the left side. Have to anticipate some kind of pick play here, I would think. They're leaving one uncovered while they finally scramble over in time. Fasani looking deep, hits sliding, get grabbed for the first down. The senior from Saginaw, Michigan, one of the all-time greats in Stanford receiving history, and he comes up with a big conversion there. Well, Pitts came on his route against Teray Butler, who has not seen a lot of action for the Huskies this year. It makes me wonder where Chris Massey is. Normally, when Anthony Ventura goes out of the game, Chris Massey comes in in replacement, but Durrani Pitts, six catches. Under pressure again over the middle, juggling grab inside the 40 by Carter. Von Tour back out on the field. And the Cardinal now in a little hurry up attack as well. Tight end couldn't hang on. Boy, what a tough throw that was. Yep, good coverage by Tyler Crambrink that time on Russell Stewart. The young man from Newport High in Bellevue. Yeah, it's a tough throw to complete. Crambrink right there in great position. And a really tough throw for Fasani. He's finally gotten hot on this drive. It's amazing how you get hot in this little hurry up type offense, Todd. You know, as you see it time and again. Oh, yeah. And the Monday morning quarterbacks always want to know how come you didn't do it before. Yes. <laughs> you see under 50% still, but he's definitely picked up his numbers here in the fourth quarter. Quick pop there. Boy, that's an ankle tackle away from going for six that time, as Kerry Carter knows it. He was that far away from taking it into the end zone. Boy, there's no question. Carter was off to the races right there. He hobbles off. But that was just inches from going. The field was spread in the middle. He's shaken up. 101 yards passing for Fasani in this quarter alone. Again, scrambles out of pressure. Good open field and a solid tackle that time. Crambrink getting him inside the 30. Well, he picks up about five yards, but when he scrambles like that after dropping back, he eats up a lot of clock. Now it's down to about three minutes. Huskies need to get a little pressure on the Fasani right now. He don't give him time to throw the football. Open man this time, Ryan Wells inside the 20 and out of bounds. Sonny, the other thing this hurry up does as well is it doesn't let the Husky defense get a quick breather. They start to get a little fatigue. Well, in this type of weather too, Todd, I mean, yep. it's muddy out there, it's wet, and. You're kind of back on your heels. The offense has a little bit of an advantage. You see Buzz Preston talking to Ty Tyrone there. This is when you got to dig deep and come up tough. There are the numbers now for Fasani. 58% completion rate, 113 yards just in this quarter, along with the score. Plenty of time, deep and grab. First and goal, Stanford pits down to the four before Lowe got him. Cardinal with a man shaken up a little bit on the play as the wide receiver Ryan Wells was down in the end zone. He's looking over to the sideline trying to get some help. They'll waste no time and now the Huskies have a man down on the ground as well. And that's Newell shaken up so the secondary stretched even further and Carruthers will have to come in for him. See the Huskies dropping back in zone. Durrani Pitts just settling down right in between the backers, see Ben Madavi way deep back near the goal line may have dropped too deep on the zone coverage. The emotion definitely swinging Stanford's way as well. Well, they're certainly on fire after the injury to Williams. The Husky offense has really stuttered a little bit. Although they got the big score from Hurst. Give Stanford some credit. They're moving the ball the way you always expect Stanford to move the ball, and that's through the air. Carter in motion. Fasani trying to run the draw to the goal line and in.
Fasani does a great job. Nobody open, doesn't hesitate, takes off up the middle, gets blocking. Holman with the big block on Mandavi, and he's into the end zone. And, you know, Fasani has run the ball real well this afternoon, Todd. Bazzelli to attempt to bring him within three. Huskies nearly got a piece of that one, but the Cardinal convert. They're within a field goal. They got an onside kick the last time. Pisani's rush puts this game in an uncertain state. Mike Fazelli with a field goal miss in the game from 42. Otherwise, we might have a deadlock contest right now. He's one for, rather, uh, yeah, one for, two for three on his field goal attempts as they got the two-point conversion. He's made the onside kick as well. Well, let's see. Let's watch Todd Elstrom and see who may grab him. Huskies go for the grab. They lost the ball, and I think Carter has it again. Holy cow. Well, the hands team is working for Stanford. Let's watch the kick here. You see Jeremy Stevens run over. Whoop, Pat Conniff right through the old pause. I'm not so sure Kerry Carter didn't come in from out of bounds to get that ball. Nope, just mud flying around over there. Wow. What a turn of events here for the Huskies. Think about it, including the penalty, that's three times they tried it, and all three times they got the ball. And they are on a roll. Underneath for Pitts. Akbar knocking him out, just short of a first down. That's the least of the Husky defense's worries right now. Stanford's doing an excellent job of getting to Ronnie Pitts, who was absent for the whole first half, back into the ball game the second half and running underneath patterns and also getting out of bounds. That's Man, eight catches for 72 yards now for Pitts, all of them in the second half. Allen, enough for the first down. Brian Allen running very strongly to pick up that first down. Boy, quarterback when they're hot, Todd, and Fasani has been hot here lately, and they're running routes to make him hot. Short routes, underneath routes, and you're going to your main man, Durrani Pitts. Out of the gun this time, and trying, and he busts it up the middle. Triplet giving chase, misses him. Inside the 20. First and goal, Stanford, Randy Fasani with another scrambling play. Sonny, what makes a difference for a quarterback to all of a sudden get in a groove? How does all this happen? I mean, this is an ad lib, but. Well, you've got people playing that passing attack, and you're the only guy, everybody's dropping off in coverage. You've got a lot of young people on the field as well. And, hey, Fasani's a big guy. He can run with the football coming into the ball game. He had run for positive yardage Fasani, on design plays. Fasani has run for 46 yards in this quarter alone. The Huskies take a defensive timeout. Stanford with more than 200 yards of total offense in the fourth quarter. The Huskies trying to make a stop.
Rick Neuheisel and the Huskies trying to hang on on the road in the fourth quarter. Up man gets smacked. Casey Moore going nowhere. Jeremiah Farms there to take care of him. They try to get everybody safely unentangled. Randy Fasani has been in refuse to lose mode here in the fourth quarter in the last three drives. He's seven of nine passing for 120 yards. And nothing really long either, Todd. It's all been good underneath stuff to Durrani Pitts. And, and some of that, Sonny, you just have to figure is fatigue. The receivers keep running route after route after route and finally spring it. Huskies make some defensive substitutions now. Get some personnel shuffled in and out. What do you think? Try to isolate one of the receivers here. So clock's winding down. I bet he goes for another run. They're trying to milk it as much as they can. On the rollout, trying to find Pitts. Still holding, still holding. Dives and he's kept short. That's a nice option there, Sonny, to just let him extend and then tuck it upfield because you've got to be honest on the receiver. Well, he's been the most successful runner for that Stanford offense this afternoon. I would get him in a position to get out there and let him make the play. Washington using a timeout. They're second. See Ben Madavi eyeing Pisani, trying to stay in coverage, but also keeping his eyes out for him. Able to come out and help him stop him short of the goal line. Yeah, but you've got to stay true to the receivers at the same time. That's what makes it so nice. That's right. It puts pressure on everyone on the outside. It has not been a kind fourth quarter to the Cardinal for much of the season, but they have turned it around on these last couple possessions against a team which usually does very, very well in the fourth quarter. Well, you practice those onside kicks, you get your hands team out there. It's very wet this afternoon and uh, Stanford coming up with two in a row. And it's that's what a coach likes to see, especially if you're Tyrone Willingham. Each team has one timeout left. So we said Stanford able to capitalize twice on onside kicks. This was the second one. Uh, Paselli does an outstanding job hitting the top of the football, getting a lot of height and bounce on the ball. See Pat Conniff in there just going through his mitts. Now they're trying to go for the lead. Power formation this time. Paselli for the corner. Nobody's home. He'll walk in. Naked Pisani, excuse me. And they call the naked bootleg and get it in. Smart call by Stanford. Well, it worked earlier in the ball game. You see Akeem Akbar just over committing, forgetting about the quarterback. I don't know how you can forget about him. He's being the leading rusher for Stanford this afternoon. Great call. Bazzelli on now to attempt the extra point, which would force the Huskies to get a touchdown. And does so. Well, a team that is profited by fourth quarter comebacks is on the edge of being toppled by a big one from Stanford. Well, the way they're going, Stanford should onside again. <laughs> well, the Huskies have a little bit of time, but Stanford with Baselli's leg will kick that ball deep, Todd. Pin the Huskies way back, hopefully in their own end of the field. Now, if you're a person who believes in omens, you might have said coming into the game that the Huskies were due for a loss. Here's why three straight times going back to last season. They've won three games, then lost the fourth. Twice in 99, they opened the season this year winning three, then lost to Oregon. They've won the next three since that. Right now they're six and one. They're 53 seconds away from being six and two. Well, Sweat and Johnson are back deep. And I don't think Bazzelli will give him any type of a return here. Well, you know that you, you see the guy that gets the onside re recovery, but Bazzelli right there, as you can tell that this young man knows how to kick every phase of the game because those are absolutely perfect onside kicks. On natural grass, too. He got great bounces. They're going to go for the deep one. Johnson forced back into the end zone is going to try to break it. 
He's got some room around the left. Taken out at the 20 yard line. And it's Allen there on the coverage. So the Huskies will have to go 80. They've got one timeout remaining. Well, one thing is that you lost 12 seconds off the clock by running it out. But you see right there, one timeout. And a long ways to go. The biggest thing you need to tell your team is you don't have to get the 80 on one play. Gordon Reese says, let's start with a dry ball. Hooks on one side, Robbins on the other. Elstrom slotted inside them. Looking for Elstrom. A little downfield block from Stevens and a first down clear out to the 45. That was an outstanding throw to Iasa Sopo to Todd Elstrom. But the Cardinal keeping them in the middle of the field too. Chains reset, off we go. All day long, looking deep middle, Hooks inside the 25. What a grab, Wilbur Hooks back on the field for the dogs. What a throw by Tui Asasopo. What a lot of time to fo throw the football, Todd. All day long, yeah, Stanford was not putting pressure on with the front line. Now do you look to go right about here, but you talked about again, more room rather than trying to get it in tight. Let's see when they take a strike towards the end zone. Again, time on the corner. Go ahead and run it up. Nope, he's gonna throw wide open. Robbins, touchdown Washington. Unbelievable. Touche. A little option for the Huskies that time and Marcus bought time. We saw it with Bassani getting outside with the ball, running or throwing. That time we see it with Tuiasa Sopo, puts pressure on the defense, and that young Robbins kid, Justin, comes across to his quarterback. Tui finds him for the score. Much as Fasani kept the Husky defense befuddled, the Dogs do it right here. Watch this, there you go, buying time, getting outside, puts pressure on linebackers and safeties, strong arm throw across the field, and Robbins goes up with the hands and makes the grab. Unbelievable, Todd. That's a veteran play from a freshman right there who found his quarterback and found the opening. Anderson with the extra point. Have we just seen another Husky fourth quarter rally. Wow, unbelievable. Three for three passing, 80 yards in a handful of seconds. Here it is again. Watch the throw. On the run, sees Robbins coming back to his quarterback for a young man to do that and make that adjustment is outstanding. And he beats the senior, Carter, who has been outstanding all over the field for Stanford today. You don't think he had his heart in his throat as he threw that one toward a freshman? I tell you what, that's a great recognition right there by Chuy Asasopo, but that's the thing I like about Justin Robbins on that play. He came all the way across the field with his hand up so his quarterback could find him. I think the young man atoned a little bit for having the one bounce off his chest early in the game, huh? All right, let's see what the deep kickoff here put Stanford back on their own 20. The Warrior showing a little heart once again, a little emotion. You bet. Boy, what an emotional ride this fourth period has been. See Coy Wire eyeballing Tuiasa Sopo right there, 22, but from the right side, you're going to see Justin Robin hand up. Where's my quarterback? Nice throw, great grab. Way to throw the ball up and over the other defenders. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> well, you just noticed that now? Yeah. <laughs> I noticed it earlier. I didn't want to say anything earlier. <laughs> you're, you're allowed to on the replay. <laughs> they
They just left too many seconds on the clock. They're supposed to do that on the last play, right? Yeah. Well. All right. It, well, you're, that's half true. You got to make sure you don't kick it deep enough. You get good coverage. Yep, you've got dangerous return guys. Anderson has pooched it a couple times already today. As this driving rain continues, he's going to go with a line drive boot. Nice grab. Ryan Wells. He bounces outside. We're not done yet, gang. Out near midfield, that's room and time. The only advantage there, though, is that it took a ton of time off the clock. One, maybe two, but if you go deep, it may be just one. Well, let's don't see any interference calls by the Huskies, and you may want to just go down far enough. It may look like you're going to the distance and maybe throw it tight to the side, maybe get in position for a long field goal. After not getting a touchdown for three and a half quarters, you see what Stanford did. Three touchdown strikes on the last three drives. Keep in mind that they have to get it about to the Husky 25 to get within the range of Bazzelli. Trips to the right, one more to the left. Under pressure, there's Triplett, got away there. Just keep the coverage. This is the last play of the game. The home run, it's nothing but white. Nearly caught by Powell, but the game what is over. And the Huskies escape from Palo Alto with perhaps their most dramatic fourth quarter comeback of the year. Unbelievable finish for these Huskies. Not only for the win, and you see Tuyas Sopo, but to be able to come back with their fallen teammate and get the victory. Washington 31, Stanford 28.